season opener in Lynchburg, Virginia. Welcome to Williams Stadium, site of tonight's action as the Liberty Flames host the top 25 Syracuse Orange. Brett McGibbon here alongside Pat Kelly, Des Rice, and Matt Kamari, and we are excited for this one. Once again, the season opener here between the Liberty Flames and the Syracuse Orange. And big news coming down, and that is that head coach Hugh Freeze not going to be on the sidelines tonight. He's going to be up in the booth. And we take a look at that, guys. You know, not having your, your boss, the guy, on the sidelines, what does that do to a team? What effect is that going to have? I think the troops are going to be rallied. I think Liberty's going to want to play for Coach Freeze and send him, welcome him to Lynchburg with a win. I think they're going to play just as hard as they would if he was on the sideline. I think it's going to be really interesting. If you look at interim coaches over the last 15 years, they're 33 and 34 when the head coach isn't on the sideline. So I okay. definitely think it's going to require, it's going to, this team is going to have to come together, and it's not going to be easy, especially with Freeze up in the press box. It's certainly a challenge to overcome, especially when you have a coach like Hugh Freeze who has so much energy and his guys really, you know, feed off of that energy that he brings to the sideline. So it's definitely a challenge to overcome. Today. What's this going to be like, though, for Buckshot, in my mind? You think a new offense is a lot more reads in the, in the Freeze system. Is it going to be the hardest? on him I think it is going to be hard because with Buckshot the thing is you don't want your quarterback to have to think and think and think you want him to be able to take the snap get the ball where it needs to go uh, so this could be tough for Buckshot new new offense coming into this year well let's turn now to our impact players on today and we're going to take a look here at Andre Cisco for the orange and this is a guy he's a turnover magnet he's a ball hawk this guy is unbelievable. You look at his stats from last year as a true freshman, led the entire country with seven interceptions. Keep in mind the conference that he plays in, Clemson, you know, the right. national champions. <laughs> Have we heard of those guys? So he led the, the entire country, led the conference. This guy is absolutely unbelievable. Comes into this season as a preseason All-American as well. This is a guy that he's going to be all over the field. It's going to be an exciting time to watch him tonight. And Des, when we look at the Flames' AGG, this is the moment to shine for him, I believe, because you're going up against a great secondary for the Orange, and he has a, an opportunity here to prove that he's one of the top receivers in the nation. Absolutely, and Antonio Gandy golden he has hopes to play in the NFL one day. Well, if, if he wants to get noticed by scouts, this is the game to do right. it. He's going up against a guy like Andre Sisco we just noted there. You know, he's got to dominate in games like this. He has to play well. It's really important for him here today. Yeah, it's going to be fun to see how Buckshot and AGG can connect through the night. Also, it's going to be fun to watch as both lines here defensively for both sides, and we have got guys that just love to get after the quarterback. There are some pass rushers here that are, are noteworthy, and Matt, we look to you, and just these guys, you know, you've got, you've got Coleman, you've got Robertson, both had 10-plus sacks last season. you got Jesse Lemonnier for the Flames. These guys are, are top-end dogs. What's tonight's game going to be like? Oh, it's, it's going to be trench warfare. The tackles have their work cut out for them. Robinson, 6'4", 260, stud, stud. And uh, he will slow play sometimes off the line. Kendall Coleman will uh, actually uh, shade down the line, follow the ball a little bit more, and stand up. Jesse Lemonnier just has to do what he did last year, continue to be physical, continue to attack the tackles with his hands, and continue to play fast. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun to watch. As we said, both sides play a really high-tempo style of play. We're going to see it here in just a sec. When we come back, it's Matt Warner and Joe Yock with the call. Foster Fuels app makes propane easy and makes more time for what matters. Without the app. Hi, I'd like to order some propane, please. Oh. With the app. Hi. Hi. Sign up for AutoFill or AutoPay and manage your account with our Foster Fuels app. Just one more way we're providing exceptional customer service. Carter Bank and Trust has supported Liberty University for over three decades. When many were skeptical of Liberty's vision, our founder, Worth Harris Carter Jr., understood the vision and saw its potential. His instincts were correct. Liberty University has become a regional economic engine. We continue Mr. Carter's legacy by working with determined visionaries to transform potentials into realities every day. As with Liberty University, Carter Bank and Trust is proud of the past, focused on the future.
2019 season kicks off with the biggest game ever played in Lynchburg, Virginia, as the 22nd ranked Syracuse Orange invade Williams Stadium to take on the Liberty Flames. And with that, we welcome you up into the booth alongside former North Carolina and CFL wide receiver Joe Yock. I'm Matt Warner. And Joe, what a day for this Liberty program. A day of firsts. First time ever welcoming in a Power 5 program. First time ever hosting a top 25 team. And the first game as head coach for Hugh Freeze of the Flames here. And I'll tell you, they have their work cut out for them today because this Syracuse team is the real deal. Yeah, they are the real deal. First of all, Matt, it's college football season. Let's get it on. That's right. So I'll tell you what, the one thing you'll say about Syracuse is that they have built a solid football program. They are good offensively, they are good defensively, and they are good on special teams. This is going to be a fun game and a fun day at Williams Stadium. Liberty won the toss. They deferred to the second half, so they will kick it away and it will sail out the back of the end zone. So Syracuse will start with the football. And their young quarterback, Tommy DeVito, making his first appearance as a starter. Got a lot of action last season as he backed up Eric Dungey, who was injured on and off throughout the year. And Joe, he, he's new to this starting gig, but how much does the experience gained a year ago help him stepping on the field right now? Oh, no question at all. And then Syracuse knows this kid can play. This kid can play. He can run the ball. He can throw the ball. Uh, he's got weapons surrounded uh, all around him. And so we all know this kid can play. Four-star kid out of New Jersey. O'Neal with him in the backfield as Syracuse runs their first offensive play. They hand it to Neal. He's hit, wrapped up after a short two-yard gain. Solomon Ajayi, the linebacker for the Flames, coming up to help bring him down. Yeah, you expect the Syracuse to do exactly what they did right there. They want to try to run the ball right up the middle, start off with a little trap play coming right up the middle. So you're going to try to see them really move the ball on the ground today. Both of these offenses expected to be high tempo. Make the handoff, the throw out wide, tackle made in space, and that's going to bring up third and short for Syracuse. Yeah, if you're ever going to have a time for Liberty in the front of the home crowd, you get them into a third and short. Can you get a stop right here and get off the field at the beginning of the game? Big down for them. This crowd at Williams Stadium coming alive. The handoff up the gut, hit. Looks like maybe on second effort he was able to get there. We'll take a look at that spot. And it's going to be a little bit close. A little, it's going to be short, actually, it looks down. like. So, yeah, fourth, fourth and about half a yard. Ooh. So decision time already oh, for Dino Babers. Quick, Matt. That's a quick one. They are going for it on fourth and half a yard. Or they could potentially just trying to draw Liberty off sides in the emotion of the game early on. Well, this could be a huge play already out of the gate. If you don't pick it up here, you hand the Flames some great field position. Vito in the shotgun. You said it, Joe. Maybe. Yeah, is it trying for to real? get somebody to jump. Nah, there's a flag. And they'll take the delay of game. Listen to this crowd. Well, that is best case scenario for <laughs> Liberty in this defense, a defense that was much maligned. They really struggled a year ago, gave up almost 37 points per game, 119th in the country. But they come out here tonight and a three and out to begin the ball game. Yeah, that's just what the doctor ordered for the Flames. But yet at the same time, the thing that Dino Babers knows, he's got, you could argue, the best punter in the country yeah. right here. And uh, he can play the field position game and be patient. Special teams are key certainly for this Syracuse squad. Their punter Sterling Hoffrichter in there now to get one away. High spiraling punt, DJ Stubbs backpedaling. Flag down as he takes it to 16, coming near side, cutting it up. Has some room, gets free. Stubbs now angling further to the sideline across the 40 and bumped out at the 44. But a flag is down, we'll see what that's all about as Stubbs delivers a nice return. DJ Stubbs is a weapon. He not only just Carrying delivered a nice return. Holding number 35, return team. So a hole on the flames. That'll the back him up. First down. Ten yards and still decent field position as they get set to start their first drive. DJ Stubbs showed great strength breaking through two tackles. He's not a, not a huge guy, but I'll tell you what, he's a strong guy. Here's a look at Buckshot Calvert, senior quarterback for Liberty, record-setting quarterback. 
holds the uh, career touchdown records for the Flames and really has a chance to rewrite the entire record book this year for Liberty. Although coming off a season in which turnovers were an issue, 18 interceptions a year ago, up big from his sophomore campaign, that has been something that Hugh Freeze and his staff have been hammering all really off season and into fall camp. You have to take care of the football. Yeah, and what a what a terrible way to take a penalty on a punt return. Yeah, I see the starting lineup there for Liberty is Flames now backed up inside their own 10 after that penalty. Buckshot looking downfield, slings it out wide towards Kevin Shaw, and it sailed wide of his target. As we take a look at the Syracuse defense, it, this is a nasty group. This is a group that will turn you over. They will get after you. They had 43 sacks a year ago, seventh in the country, forced 31 turnovers. And it's a group that has, from what we've heard, dominated their own offense all camp long. Again, Buckshot looking downfield, looking for Gandy Golden, and threw it a little far out in front of him. So a couple of passes from Calvert early, and he's been off the target with both of them. Yeah, you can see that Syracuse comes right out of the gate playing press man coverage. They're going to bring people at Buckshot, and they're going to dare their receivers to try to beat them in man-to-man -man with those two big studs on the outside, Alton Robinson and Coleman. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a fierce group on that defense. They're going to be coming now off the edge. Third and ten. Calvert has some time, swings it out of the backfield, and it's dropped by Frankie Hickson. So a sloppy start for this Flames offense as they're not able to even pick up a single yard on their first offensive series. And now they're going to be punting it back to Syracuse, and they should end up with some pretty good field position out of it. Yeah, I really like what Syracuse did right there, Matt. They played man-to-man -man on first down, man-to-man -man on second down, and then get him in third and long, only brought three and went into the zone. Aiden Alvis in to punt it away. He had his struggles certainly a year ago. He's going to be tested right out of the gate. End over end punt. Sean Riley, dangerous returner, takes it just on his side of the 50. Trying to get outside, now cuts it up. Hit, drop balls, loose, picked up by the Flames. A fumble by Riley and scooped up by Liberty at the 50. What a great play by the outside wingman who was able to force Riley back inside where all the help was. He wouldn't let, let him allow him to use his speed to get to the outside, forced him back to the inside. Bang, there's a hit. Ball's loose. Liberty football. Ryan Davis on the recovery. We talked so much this week leading up to the game about the special teams play of Syracuse, but it's a special teams play from Liberty that has them in great field position. for coming back. No score in the first quarter. This Jeep Gladiator is ready to do what you want to do. There's never been anything quite like the all-new Jeep Gladiator, engineered from the ground up to be a true pickup truck. Backed by legendary Jeep brand 4x4 capability, the Gladiator is ready to carry you and your gear. Test drive a Jeep today at Craft Jeep. No tricks, no gimmicks pricing at Billy Craft, Chrysler Dodge, Jeep Ram. For more than 120 years, we've been there. In churches and schools, camps and senior living centers. We've been there in times of joy and in the most difficult moments, in times of loss. And our success has been measured not by the bottom line, but by our unwavering commitment to protecting our customers so they can continue their important work. Church Mutual Insurance Company, protecting the greater good. The Foster Fuels app makes propane easy and makes your granny feel hip. What you doing over there, Sonny? Uh, I'm just posting a picture from our beach trip. What are you doing, granny? Ordering propane with the Foster Fuels app. Whoa, you use apps now? Yeet! This app is lit! Order fuel and manage your account with our Foster Fuels app. Just one more way we're providing exceptional customer service. What? Did I not say it right? Carter Bank & Trust has supported Liberty University for over three decades. When many were skeptical of Liberty's vision, our founder, Worth Harris Carter Jr., understood the vision and saw its potential. His instincts were correct. Liberty University has become a regional economic engine. We continue Mr. Carter's legacy by working with determined visionaries to transform potentials into realities every day. As with Liberty University, Carter Bank & Trust is proud of the past, focused on the future. 
Here's a look at that fumble a moment ago. It was Javon Scruggs getting in there as well as uh, I think it was Tyron Dupree that got in there as well to jar it loose. John Riley putting it on the turf. Flames scoop it up. And now they're in business at their own 49. Sean Scruggs made a game-changing play right there by being able to force Riley back inside and have the opportunity to create the fumble. So Flames have it now after going three and out. The offense not really able to get on track. Really new life here as they have great field position. Calvert gives it off. Running near side is Pickett. Pickett has some room to run across the Syracuse 40. Peyton Pickett taking his first handoff and picking up a Flames first down. See, Matt, that's what Liberty has to do. They have to be able to run the football, especially if you're getting played man-to-man. -man. You can run those receivers off and then get the ball up through that first wave. Pickett remains in the game. They give it, nope, pull it out, throw it out. Field caught by Gandy Golden. He's carrying a man with him down to the 20-yard line. Afatu Melifanwu on the coverage, but Gandy Golden getting involved here early on. Great ball fake by Buckshot being able to get those linebackers suckered in. And that's part of this, one of the staples of this Q Freeze offense is that little wide receiver screen didn't go anywhere. Kevin Shaw dropped for a couple yard loss. And now we have an injured player down for Syracuse. Looks like a defensive lineman. They're already a little light on that D line already. McKinley Williams out with an injury it suffered in camp. And now that's Kenneth Ruff, defensive tackle, senior. He's down on the field right now being tended to. Well, we mentioned Hugh Freeze not on the field. Liberty's new head coach, he is watching from the box. That is the man, Maurice Harris, co-offensive coordinator that's running the show on the field. So he's kind of assuming some of those head coaching duties on the field, if you will, while Hugh Freeze watches from a hospital bed up here on our level. We'll actually catch up with him at halftime to get his thoughts. A strange situation as he had back surgery and sta terrible staff infection that was really ki kind of dangerous. As you take a look, you can see Coach stretched out there. A unique situation to say the least as he's doing everything he can to help his squad, although not healthy. Nobody's competing harder than Coach right That's now. That's right. Second down for Liberty. The handoff going again to pick it and nowhere to run this time. He's dropped for a couple yard loss. And the Flames, after Getting down to the 20, it moved the wrong direction these last two plays. I like that Liberty's trying to make a commitment to run the football. You can't come out and say, we're going to throw it every down. you got to be able to, even sometimes you don't get a yard, get only but a yard or two, you got to be able to commit to run the football, which will open up other things in your offense. Flames substitute in another receiver now. Third and 15. They go three to the right side of Calvert, one to the left. Pickett remains in the backfield. Syracuse was just three down linemen. Calvert climbs in the pocket, looking, firing in and out of the hands of DJ Stubbs. He was trying to go somewhere before he had that one corralled. And it'll bring up fourth down now, and the field goal team comes on. I really like what Buckshot did there. He sat in the pocket. He was patient. He was only a three-man rush, so he knew he had time. And then he didn't try to force anything. Don't try to force something downfield that can get intercepted. DJ just has to make the play to create a shorter field goal. Liberty has the first opportunity to get points on the board. 42-yard attempt now for Alex Probert. He was 4-5 of in an injury-shortened season a year ago. Kick is away. It is up. And he missed it. Just pushed it a little bit in a missed opportunity for the Flames here in the early going. They had an opportunity to put the first points on the board, unable to do it, and we remain scoreless here in Lynchburg.
No score here as Liberty missed an opportunity on a field goal chance a moment ago. Time now, though, to check in with the third member of our team, Melanie Newman, on really the lead up to this game for both sides. Melanie? Thanks, guys. Well, school's back in session. That applies to football as well. Running back Frankie Hickson says they have torn apart footage all week long. They've never been more prepared for an opponent than Syracuse because of the availability. Games against people like Clemson, Western Michigan have given them all the tools that they need to read what the Orange are bringing to the field today. Now, on the flip side, head coach Dino Babers for Syracuse has been very open about the fact that what Liberty brings today is kind of unknown for them. They've had a really tough time finding footage on some of the players for Liberty, especially those D2 guys. So kind of riding underneath the curtain right now, Liberty's got to take that to their advantage. Well, it's been all Liberty advantage here so far tonight. A sack is Ralph's Rusens. Gets in the backfield. Big junior out of Karnakava, Latvia. You know the Latvia. first? Ralphie. You know the first Division I Latvian football player? Ooh. Give me this one. Right? Ralph Rusens. Oh, Ralph. Yeah, there is a Ralph. Yeah, give the man some credit. He picks oh, up the sack as good pressure from the interior of that Liberty defensive line. DeVito now looking, it's nearly picked, oh my! Amari Jenkins right there like he was running the route and he had no one in front of him if he had snagged that one. I love how Liberty's mixing up their looks on defense. You know, we only talked about preparation, Matt. There's an old saying that, that the courage comes from preparation. Excessive preparation is the tonic for courage. And I'll tell you what, Liberty, when you feel prepared, you can play the game courageously. I think that's an old Latvian saying. The handoff goes up the middle, quickly dropped. This defense, they are hungry. Here's the freshman, Trey Shop Clark, with the tackle and another three and out for this Syracuse offense. Well, so far, this has been the exact opposite of what we all thought it would be. And obviously, it's very early, a long way to go. But this defense for Liberty, Everyone's saying, boy, they were brutal the past couple of years. Can they slow down Syracuse? So far, so good. They have looked good, especially up front. Now, however, Matt, when Liberty gets opportunities, those opportunities have to come in points. That's right. Hoffrichter to punt it away. Stubbs had a nice return. Wiped off the board because of a penalty last time. He'll take it at the 25. Slams on the break. Still on his feet. Finally surrounded and stood up. And that'll be the end of that. Slam him to the turf, and there comes a penalty flag. Well, you get all fired up, first game of the season. You know, blood's pumping, and you had him stood up. Yeah. You could have just walked away. Instead, they throw him to the turf, and the Flames are going to pick up 15 yards. And this time of the year, emotions will get the best of you. That's when the veteran football players for Syracuse have to come over to the young man and say, hey, come on, we made a great job covering the punt. After the play was over, him. unsportsmanlike conduct, number 18, kicking team, his first of the game. 15-yard penalty, first down. Yeah, senior Scoop Bradshaw getting the penalty there. All right, time now for our Foster Fuels keys of the game. Now, Joe, we asked for keys, like one each. You sent us, like, a whole page. You have more keys than a custodian. <laughs> we had to narrow you down here. Give me one for each side. I mean, you didn't just narrow me down. You put me down to one. But I'm going to go with keep Buckshot clean. With these defensive ends and the pressure that Syracuse can put on, on the quarterback, if you can keep Buckshot clean, that gives them a chance. Taking Tristan Schultz and moving him from right tackle back over to left tackle this year. Let's see if they can hold up in protection. Empty backfield. Now they bring Hicks in there behind Calvert. Handoff. No, that's Joshua Mack. Now they get it to Gandy Golden. He's got some room. Cuts it to the near side. Stiffs arms the defender across the 30. Down to the 20. He's still carrying people down to the four-yard line. If that doesn't get you fired up. I don't know what will. What a play by Gandy Golden. Gandy Golden carrying Orange defenders down inside the 10. A lot of talk about the Bolitnikov Award watch list receiver coming into the season, and he shows you why there. Now the handoff to Josh Mack powers his way down to about the four. Let's take another look at that reception by Gandy Golden. And he's not just big and strong, he's got a little elusiveness to him as well. Yeah, you don't see it there, but when you looked at the route at the beginning, he stuck his foot in the ground, got his shoulder square, and caught a separation from the defender. And then the little pause move, how nice was that? So the Flames moving the football once again down inside the red zone, unable to put points on the board the first time. You've got to come away with not just points here. If you're huge with freeze in this offense, you're thinking, we got to get six. Joshua Max still in there, running back, stands to the right of Buckshot. They give it to him. 
Chase down from behind. Ball comes free, and Syracuse covers it up. You fumble inside the five, and the Flames waste another golden opportunity. I'm not sure who that was for Syracuse, but what an I, unbelievable job chasing I think chasing that was down. Trill Williams coming all the way across the field and just hacking that thing out of the hands of Josh Mack. See, and that right there, Matt, is why they're a veteran football team. A big play happens offensively, and then all of a sudden, you're down, backed up, getting ready to team, getting ready to score a touchdown on you, and big players come up with big plays when it, when it matters the most. Josh Mack taking his first handoffs in a Flames uniform on that drive, a transfer from Maine, and you see that talking to, he's getting now from Flames running backs coach Bruce Johnson. When you are an underdog, when you're going up against a top 25 team, you have got to take advantage of looks just like that. They weren't able to do it. Now he freeze his blood pressure rising as he's watching this one. Syracuse backed up now. They give to Abdul Adams. He's in there for the first time. He lunges forward for about a yard. Adams a transfer from Oklahoma. Really like how Liberty's defensive line is seen being able to hold up up front. They're not getting driven back. They're staying square and they're, they're be able to, to close on the football really quickly. Adams remains in the game at running back. They're going to give it to him again. Plants his foot, tries to get upfield, hit it about the nine, keeps pushing, and he'll be stood up there, and it'll bring up another third down. Another big third down. That's right. Adams an interesting kid. We mentioned a transfer from Oklahoma. He's a junior. His sophomore year with the Sooners, he averaged over nine yards a carry on 59 carries, so he is a weapon. We're really going to get an extended look at him here today. It's a lot of yards. So third down. Vito swings it out. Adams out of the backfield. He's got the edge. He's got the first down and drug down there alongside the far sideline. So the first first down now for this Syracuse offense is they swing it out to their running back. Yeah, that was an assignment breakdown on Liberty's defense right there as Adams swung out of the backfield. The linebacker dipped inside and he should have been in coverage with him. He may have had a horse collar on the end of that. Yeah, they're going to get a horse collar going against the Flames. That's the call. Amari Jenkins tackling them up high, so that tacks on some yardage now for the Orange. We've seen a little bit of everything so far. Yeah. Turnovers, missed opportunities, yep, yep. some untimely penalties. penalties yeah. Basically, what you expect in a first game first of the game, season. First game of the season, but you got to clean that. If Liberty wants any chance in this game, once again, Syracuse will be able to work through those things. Liberty's got to convert when they have the opportunities. Vito sits, has time in the pocket, now rolling to his right. He'll launch it downfield, little bump on the receiver. That one sailed out wide of the target, and he was out of bounds, so incomplete. Syracuse offense, a prolific one. Averaged over 40 points per game last season, 11th in the nation. Fast paced to say the least. When they are right, when they are doing what they want to do, they are moving quickly and go with high tempo. We want to watch that number one, Sean Riley. He is a mover and a shaker. He's in motion right now. Dump settles into the slot. They get it to him and he drops it. Tough start to the game for Riley. Remember he had the fumble yeah. on the punt return. Now that one goes right through his hands. And it'll bring up third and long. I have a feeling though, Matt Warner, I have a feeling we have not heard the last of Sean Riley. I would say that's probably a safe bet. Third and 10, this Williams Stadium crowd comes alive as you take a look at that starting defense for the Flames. They've been up to the challenge so far here tonight. Four receivers wide. Abdul Adams in the backfield. Here comes some pressure from the Flames. DeVito rolling out, has room to run. And he's got the first down. The Flames brought pressure. Syracuse picked it up. And DeVito had plenty of room to take off. You know, when you bring pressure, and Syracuse did a great job picking it up right there. However, what you can't do is you can't allow the quarterback to break contain when they bring the pressure. DeVito, as much as you hear about, oh, he's a pocket passer, that's what he is. He's also a pretty good athlete. We saw some designed runs for him a year ago when he was on the field, and he showed you there. He may not look to run as his first option, but he's a good enough athlete to do it if need be. He's looking to throw this time. Near sideline, his receiver had slipped and fallen down, and that one sails incomplete. 
Looked like he was targeting Taj Harris there. Mentioned DeVito in his first collegiate start. Did play in eight games, though, a season ago. Four touchdowns, three interceptions. Really a, an up and down season for him, as you'd expect with a young guy. They're hoping he can kind of settle in and give them some consistency this year. Under duress, able to get, roll outside away from it. They'll step out of bounds, maybe a yard loss on the play. That was Jesse Lumenier bearing down on it. You know what I'm really impressed by right now, Matt, is defensively, Liberty's ends have allowed the quarterback to break contain, but the secondary has held up well in that by being able to cover the receivers and not getting long balls downfield thrown on them. Third and 11 for the Syracuse 49. They were able to pick up third and long a moment ago. Four wide receivers set, two to each side. Now the Orange look to the sideline. Clock winding down. They get it off in time. Here comes a blitz off the edge. DeVito, he may tuck it and run again. He will. A race for the first down. It looks like he's going to be a couple yards shy. Yeah, he's short there. But once again, Liberty allowed him to be able to break contain and get to the outside. And now you give them an opportunity here on this part of the field where they may be thinking about going for it on fourth and two. Yeah, this is go for range right here. Then we'll call it three. It's a full three yards. So Vito able to make something happen with his legs here on this drive. And they reset the play clock. They seem to be having some issues. The officials trying to get everybody on the same page here as this offense. You want to go. At Syracuse, you want to go. This is your, you want to play up tempo. You want to yeah. keep the pedal to the floor. Please reset the game clock to 4 minutes 50 seconds. 4.50 and start it on my signal. Really want to see how Liberty plays this fourth down. Are they going to bring a lot of pressure up the middle? Or are they going to back off and expect a pass and try to undercut something? Haven't been able to get to them when they have brought pressure. Four wide receivers. Abdul Adams remaining in. He'll stand to the right side of DeVito. Fourth and three. DeVito looking to his right, locking one down the field. Good coverage, and it is picked off. Intercepted. Seneca Espinoza got his head around, and like a center fielder, fielder able to snag it. That was a great interception, Matt. There's only one problem with it. Turned into a nice punt for Syracuse. I think the Flames will take it as opposed to the alternative. Good yeah. coverage <laughs> by Seneca downfield. The Flames get the football back. Still scoreless in Lynchburg.
422 to go in this first quarter. Still no score. And the happiest guy in the stadium right now is that guy right there. Scott Simons, defensive coordinator for Liberty. Last year inside linebackers coach at Memphis. Was the defensive coordinator at West Georgia before that. He's got his guys flying around right now. He's coming from... You know, the D2 ranks as a coordinator to now here. Hugh Freeze, of course, has been on the biggest stage before. And with more on that, we check in once again with Melanie. Thanks. Well, guys, it's no secret what Hugh Freeze has seen in his career as a coach. Some of the biggest moments you could imagine on the gridiron have been his to own. And having that confidence, that calmness when it comes to facing a big opponent is a trickle-down effect to the rest of his players. Now, after they studied the footage, even Buckshot said, this is another man. It's another team. That's it. It doesn't matter that they're the first power to come here to our house. It doesn't matter that they're an ACC opponent. It's just a team, and we've done our homework to be able to handle this here tonight. So far, they've gotten Antonio Gandy Golden going here early. And Joe, you know as a former receiver yourself, mm -hmm. getting involved early can make all the difference for a wideout. Yeah, no question whatsoever. But what do you see right there, especially in the last throw? Buckshot has got zip on the ball today. His arm strength even looks stronger than it was last year. Frankie Hickson goes nowhere with that carry, his first carry of the night. Gandy Golden already three catches, 88 yards receiving. So he has gotten involved here in the early stages of this one, and they're going to need him to stay that way as we get deeper into this ball game. Gandy Golden is their star. Yeah. He is Liberty's star. Now he has to show up in a big-time game. Second and 10. Hickson remains in the game at running back. Here comes some pressure off the edge. Hickson picks it up. They sling it down. Field and it's picked. Right into the waiting arms of Afatu Malafanwu. Calvert led Kevin Shaw a little bit too far. Coverage was good, and the Flames turn it right back over. Yeah, he couldn't have said any better, Matt. He was he was open. Shaw was open coming in on the dig route, but he just led him a little bit too far. He had him there, but yeah, just a little bit too far out in front. And for a team that forced so many turnovers a season ago, the Syracuse team is doing it right here already. A couple of them, they forced a fumble. Now an interception, and now they're the ones with good field position. And it feels like early on it's not who's going to make the big plays, who's not just going to mess it up. Right, right. That's right right now. But you look at that play right there. Buckshot had a linebacker coming and breathing right down his throat in his face, and that caused a little bit of an errant throw. So you got to give credit to Syracuse. Great defense. Each quarterback is going to pick here in the early going. The handoff goes to Adams. He's popped down after a short game. Ari Jenkins there to drop him. Once again, you see Syracuse trying to be committed to the inside run. Get this O-line involved early. Another handoff. Adams, a little room. That hole closed quickly. Roush Rusin's there to wrap him up, send him to the turf, and it'll bring up third and five. I'll tell you what, Matt. Defensively, especially on the defensive line, Liberty just looks yeah. like a stronger football team, oh. a weight room strength right. football team. We saw them a lot last season. There weren't many stretches where they looked like they've looked so far here tonight, that's for sure. They swing it out wide in space, and they get him down. Great job out there by Javon Scruggs, the sophomore, a local kid out of Appomattox. State champion quarterback three times. Able to get just a hold of those ankles and get them to the turf to bring up fourth and short. You know, in our talking with Coach Freeze during the week, he talked specifically about you'll know a lot early by how we tackle. And Liberty is tackling well right now. So now you're going to see the All-American. Place kicker, Andre Schmidt, Rosa Award winner a year ago, considered by most to be the best kicker in the country. And he's going to have a chance here from 45 out. Hold is down, kick is up, and it's pure. That's like a chip shot for that guy, right down the middle. As Syracuse breaks through on the scoreboard first, able to take advantage of the interception and put points on the board. As Andre Schmidt did what he did all last season, 30 out of 34 times. Schmidt took that field goal from 45, and he just said, you know, he gave it the psst. <laughs> this is easy. Yeah, yeah, right. Easy. Yeah. Made it look easy. Hey, look at those guys in the orange beards. Straight up and through. You get a look there at Liberty's new uh, football operations center that's under construction right now with some of the Syracuse fans in attendance having a good time. Yeah, see those guys right there, man? Those guys are just, 
You just want to hang out with those kind of guys. <laughs> those are going to have a good time right there. Got the orange on, supporting their team, made the trip all the way. Hey, listen, it's not cool out here. Yeah, it's a yeah, hot yeah. night, so you have to be yeah. committed if you're yeah. going to go wig and beer. You go wig and beer, you double up like that, that's what they refer to as competitive greatness. You right got you, you to yeah. hydrate, though, if you do that. It doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't just happen here. No, it starts no, really no, in the no. first thing in the morning, yeah. Yeah. continues through the tailgate, which I'm sure it did. So Syracuse to kick it away. Jadro Lewis, a freshman, back to return. And that will land deep in the end zone, and the Flames will take the touchback. All right, let's see now even, how they're going to respond. Yeah, not even into the first quarter, but I feel like it's been a roller coaster ride for yeah. both of these teams already. Yeah, no shortage of action. Yeah. You feel like if one side is more maybe ready to cope with that, yeah. it'd be the guys in orange. Yeah. You know, the veteran group, they, they've experienced right. success more so than this Flame squad has. But Matt, so they you, can weather the storm. You look at, you said the word cope. You said the word cope. Buckshot has to cope with the interception yeah. he just threw because that was a knock on him last year. Right. There was a lot of interceptions, so how will he cope with that now? Flames starting at the 25, swinging out of the backfield, caught by Hickson. Has some room, good blocking downfield as he picks up eight and then lets it roll out of bounds. Flames have a nice pick up there on first down. See, I love that call. Okay, Buckshot throws an interception, so what do you do when you come up first play the next series? You just throw a nice little swing pass out there. Easy throw, get him back into rhythm. Hickson had 10 catches a year ago. It'll be interesting to see how much Hugh Freeze uses those running backs in the passing game this year. Hickson takes, nope, pulls it out, throwing downfield now. A lot of contact. And Shaw was out of bounds anyway. He had been forced out of bounds there by Melifonwu, who's having a really nice evening so far. And it'll bring up third and two for Liberty. He watches Syracuse corners on film from last year. These guys play man-to-man, -man and they play it confidently, which you have to do as a corner. That is what you call unabated to the quarterback. <laughs> as we had a jump there. That's Alton Robinson, who was about, oh, I don't know, three counts too soon. And that'll Offside. move the chains. Defense unabated to the quarterback, number 94. Five-yard penalty results in a first down. Getting a little too eager there, and no doubt Dino Babers saying, man, on third down, we can't, you can't have that. I'll tell you what, you look at Alton Robinson Oof. right there. That is what an NFL football player looks like. These two ends, Kendall Coleman, Alton Robinson. You expect to be calling their name a lot tonight. Handoff goes up the middle. Hickson picks up a couple. Josh Black there wrapping him up and taking him down. Great to see Frankie Hickson in the game get involved. He's thousand yard returning rusher from last year, and they really need him to step up and have a great season this year. Yeah, Hickson a surprise a year ago. Started third on the depth chart, ended up with over a thousand rushing yards. Pressure coming. Calvert avoids it. Throws a little sidearm action down the field. Caught by Gandy Gold for the first down. Buckshot, not a guy that wants to run. But he's a little bit sneaky athletic right. in his ability right. to avoid the rush. That's right. He stays alive, and that's exactly what he did there. Buckshot going under center now as they swing out to DJ Stubbs. He looks to pass it. Now in trouble. Stays on his feet and just throws it away. Oh, mama. That could have got bad in a hurry. Great job by DJ just staying alive. And they actually, it's going to be bad in the end anyway. They're going to get him for intentional grounding, I think. There's no way. Intentional grounding. Number five, offense. The player who received the snap is the only player by rule who is allowed to leave the tackle box and intentionally ground the ball. Loss of down at the spot of the foul. Second down. Well, that's not something you hear often. I still don't understand that. <laughs> he threw it away, no doubt. Now, let's take a look. So basically he's saying the tackle box rule does not apply to anyone other than the quarterback. But there's a receiver right there. There was a receiver on the sideline. But they're going to get him for intentional grounding, and that's a huge loss now. Big penalty. As that's going to be about second, 22-23. So that could be a drive killer. Calvert, here comes the pressure. Wrapped up, dropped. Syracuse able to get there. Harper in on the play. 
Curtis Harper, Kingsley Jonathan in there as well as that pocket just collapsed around him. So now it's going to be third and a couple of miles. Buck shot fixed up, and this is your draw and screen time, That's and right. nothing there. Then you punt it and live to play another play. That'll get us to the end of the first quarter. A lot of action, not many points. After the first quarter of play, Syracuse leading Liberty by the score of three to nothing. Welcome you back to Lynchburg, Virginia right now. Syracuse on top of Liberty 3 to nothing. And guys, we, we take a look at that first quarter of action. Everybody's talking about just how dominant the Syracuse defensive line is. All of a sudden, Liberty special teams, they create a turnover. They get the fumble. And then the Liberty defense just took that momentum and ran with it. Their D-line's holding up well and creating a lot of pressure. It's been unbelievable to see what Coach Scott Simons has done in this 4-2-5 yeah. defense. And the athletes that Hugh Freeze has brought in, the athletes that are on this field is unbelievable. The speed has been fun to watch so far. The defense is looking to make a statement in this game. I think they heard you talking about how bad they were last year. Well, early. good. They needed to hear something. Maybe so, because they've really stepped up here in the first half. You know, holding them only to three points here has been good in this first quarter. Yeah. Looking to keep that up here in the second quarter. You might wonder where Matt Camary is. No, he's not the buffet line like most O linemen. He's actually getting <laughs> honored right now as being a part of the 2009 Liberty football team. And now we'll head back to Matt and Joe. Yeah, yeah, they haven't been honored, Brett, so I think he might actually be at the buffet line. I think he just, he just told <laughs> no, you that. No, you leave Brett. Yeah. Leave him mad alone. Uh, you guys were a little light there on the set without Kamari. All right, good thing we had that break. It took him that long to calculate how far the Flames would have to go here on third down. It's third and 28. So, yeah, your typical draw territory. 
Joe. Outside screen, draw. Something, something safe something here. Something safe, some simple. They clock down to two. They get it off. Buck shot. Under pressure, dropped. So much for safe and simple. Air cut in that Syracuse rush. And that was Kendall Coleman getting in there and dropping him. Coleman with 10 sacks a year ago. Yeah, I'm not too sure about that, man. You, you get that Coleman, get Coleman coming from behind. You don't have a chance to strip the ball out. That's a little bit of a dangerous play, but you freeze. Ken Austin, offensive coordinator, they got a lot of riverboat gambler in them. Sean Riley back to return the punt. Aiden Alvis on to kick it away. Riley calls for the fair catch at the 28, and he'll take it there. Surprised Riley Fair caught that with his speed and quickness. He had a little bit of space there to make something happen. Remember, he had the fumble on his first punt return. Maybe that's still in the back of his mind a bit as the Syracuse offense gets ready to take the field. Well, you take a look just at the stats, and it, it trends towards the Flames. They lead in total yards, 96. They felt Syracuse is just 53 total yeah. yards in this game. Syracuse running for less than three yards, a carry on the ground. But yeah. really, that. Those numbers don't matter. It's, it's the scoreboard that matters. And so far, the Orange will be the only team able to put points on the board here early on. It's all about the points. It's like you get all dressed up to go to the prom with your date and everything, and you're all gussied up, and then you get there and you don't even dance. Now you got to get some points on the board. Here's the big play they were looking for. DeVito hits his receiver in stride. That's Taj Harris finally wrapped up and dropped in Flames territory. Yeah, these, these Syracuse receivers are explosive. Taj Harris gets downfield quick, is an explosive football player. It's a matter of time before they break one loose. Now Syracuse hustles up to the line. Toss play coming near side. And a nice pickup on first down from O'Neal. See, this is what Syracuse wants to do. They get the big play downfield with Taj Harris. Now O'Neal picks up six, seven yards. This is exactly in their wheelhouse, wheelhouse for what they want to do offensively. Second three now. O'Neal still in there running back. Vito looks to him and throws a little bit behind him. Neal kind of sat down, waited for a couple of seconds, then decided to try to take it across the middle of the field, and that throw went behind him. Big, big third down for Liberty right here. They're in that potential field goal range, yet at the same time, boy, could they ever use a stop. Third and three. Three wide receivers. And we get a whistle. And we may get a timeout. Yeah, Liberty's going to take a timeout before timeout. the snap. Liberty, their first of the half. So maybe sensing, like you said, Joe, big third down yeah. here early in this ball game. They're going to talk about it. They take a timeout. We will as well. Number 22, Syracuse on top of Liberty, 3-0.
her contribution in building the rich tradition that is Liberty Plains football. on top of the Flames here for the 13 28 to go in the second quarter. We've seen a little bit of good, a little bit of bad from each of these two quarterbacks with more on the signal callers. We head down to Melanie Newman. Well, if you look at those numbers, Tommy DeVito and Buckshot Calvert had held about even, like you said, between the good and the bad. Now, there's some balance, some give and take with that. Calvert, a senior, he's a leader on this team. And, of course, he's going up against one of the toughest opponents in his collegiate career. DeVito has had a little bit of backing from Babers. Now, he's not expected to carry this team as a leader just yet. Again, he is a redshirt sophomore. This is his first collegiate true start here. And Babers said, you know, he's young, but there's older guys around him and I know the QB is the traditional leader but we're gonna lean on the guys that are around that line and backing him to lead that offense and he's going to have to lean on that here. Well, they gave it to Mo O'Neill there on third and short and it looks like he's gonna come up about a yard and a half short of that first down. So it's gonna bring up fourth and short now for Syracuse and it looks like they're gonna lead the offense on the field. A little bit surprised by that with an All-American kicker they have the opportunity to put points on the board. This is a long fourth down. Call it fourth and a long two. Vito hands off, running up the middle, and that'll be enough. As it was Neal once again on the carry, able to pick up about five. So they stuck with their senior running back. He's able to get it. The guy that, I mean, you want to talk about impressive. He averages 5.4 yards per carry for his career. He's fifth behind guys like Jim Brown, Ernie David. Like, these are, like, not just big names in Syracuse ball, in the history of football. So he's in good company. He remains in the game. Little play action. DeVito looking down the field, firing. And he overshoots his intended target. Uh, he was trying to get Tristan Jackson there, the transfer out of Michigan State. That was a very confident fourth and two call by Syracuse. Fourth and two to run the ball right up the middle with Mo Neal. Shows a great amount of confidence in their offensive line, a young offensive line that they've had to put together and Moniel at running back to be able to find a way to get that first down. Yeah, and you think that offensive line would probably feed off that a little bit. The, the, their coach is entrusting them with getting the job done and getting some push. Second down now, DeVito looking to his left, firing into the flat, breaking a tackle as Riley. Oh, look at the moves for Riley as he was able to pick up a couple extra yards. Yeah. You said shifty. We saw it there on that reception. Yeah, he's very shifty, but also there on that play, he showed a great deal of strength. Takes a hard hit right there, is able to stay on his feet, make another man miss, and pick up about seven, eight yards. There, the first down will be picked up by Syracuse. Is that one? Damn. Swung by to Nike Johnson. You're starting to feel it, Matt. Yeah. You're starting to feel Syracuse is getting a little bit of momentum offensively. They're, they're picking up their tempo. A little rhythm. Moving the chains in the red zone now. Four wide receiver set. Stacked to each side. Time in the pocket. That one caught and dropped. Right into the hands of Harris, and he couldn't hang on to it. This is where... We have to see a great improvement from Liberty as compared to last year. Red zone defense. Yes, you can march a ball up and down the field, but in the red zone when it really counts, can you make the stops? Second 10. Again, four wide receivers out there for Syracuse. Vito rolling, maybe a broken play. Now he's just going to throw it away. Looked like he was wanting Neal to kind of come underneath for like maybe a little shovel pass there. And there was a little bit of miscommunication between he and his running back. Yeah, I think he saw that there was nothing there. And Mo Neal was going to take one right in the mouth. So he decided to scramble out of the pocket and just throw it away. And like we, like we say, just live, enough, live to the next play. So third 10 now from the 18. Looks like Liberty's going to bring some pressure. They may be backing out. Solomon Ajayi coming from his linebacker position. They're setting up the screen. Oh, beautiful play design. Room to run. Mo Neal down inside the five. 
could not have dialed up a better play given what the Flames did. But the beauty of that play was how DeVito was able to get, he had so much pressure on him, you usually want to stand in there at that screen. He had to drop back 20 yards almost, being able to deliver the ball and be able to do that was an extremely good athletic play. Watch his pressure. He's got to get deep to get back there to deliver the ball. Great job by him. So once again, they come through on third down, and now they have first and goal from the five. DeVito looking to throw the fade to the corner. And he threw it behind his receiver. Taj Harris, it was there. If that ball's out in front of him, that's a touchdown. Yeah, just a little bit off, but yet at the same time, Matt, I am really impressed at how well Liberty's corners are holding up right now. They've done an outstanding job so far in this first half. It's another look. Look at the distance. There for Taj Harris. So second goal now. Hand off right up the middle. Power and turning those legs is Abdul Adams. He's cut down at the three. So I'll bring up third down. Biggest play of the game right here for Liberty's defense. Can they get a stop in the red zone on third down? Knocking at the doorstep of a touchdown. Adams remains in the backfield. DeVito goes under center. Give to their running back, and he powers his way in. Abdul Adams just lowers the shoulder and drives in for the touchdown. And that was an impressive, methodical drive from the Syracuse Orange. Yeah, you couldn't have said it any better. Adams with a power run. Get your shoulder pads down low, explode through the tackler, and find a way to get your nose into the end zone. That is an outstanding goal line run right there. Andre Schmidt comes on. That capped a 14 play drive. EAT up and through, and Syracuse goes in front 10 to nothing. Well, we talked about some missed opportunities early on for the Liberty offense. Yep. And you're right in the praise you've been giving the Flames defense. They've battled, they've hung in there. But you can't expect them to keep this thing. You know, you can't expect to keep them off the board. This is a, high, a potent, high-powered offense for Syracuse. Now it shifts back to that Liberty offense to pick up their fellows on the other side of the ball. Yeah. We'll see if they can do that here on the other side. We step aside. Syracuse in front of the Flames. 10-0 midway through the second quarter. Flames may not have had success getting into the end zone so far tonight, but this guy did. Fan, Flames fan proposing on the field. I assume he got a yes. Oh, 
Olivia Little subdued there. Good luck to the half. He got it, yes. Good luck to them. She's all teared up. You better be pretty confident if you pull the old public on-field proposal there. Share that moment with 22,000 of your closest friends. your closest friends, that's right. 10 nothing. Syracuse on top of the Flames as the Orange set to kick it away. This one looks like it'll be returnable. Shadro Lewis comes up and takes it. Has some room and quickly disappears on him as he's hit and knocked out know, at man. the 22. Well, that Syracuse offense put together quite the drive. Check in once again with Melanie Newman. What's the attitude, the mood like down on that orange sideline right now? Well, it's about a complete opposite of the Jokers who are just a couple feet behind them, guys. It's very quiet. Even after that touchdown, there was nothing that was over the top about their celebration. And you want to think that part of that goes back to the fact that Dino Baber said how much he respects Hugh Freeze and what he's been able to do as a coach. They're not treating this like a small game at all. They know that the task is at hand here. And a lot of discipline down here on the sidelines is Guys are either quietly sitting on the bench or standing with a bated breath on the sidelines. Yeah, what did what did Dino Baber say? I asked him, what do you most what most concerns you about this Liberty offense? He said, the mind of Hugh Freeze. That's right. what concerns me. Hugh Freeze right now coaching from a hospital bed just down the hall from us as Buckshot Calvert sweeps it out. Catch made by DJ Stubbs. Oh, makes a man miss. Able to pick up about five or six on first down. Yeah, you look at what well, he said right there, the, the, the business-like attitude. That seems to be the battle cry of their football team, is that they're good in all three phases of the game. They take a very business-like approach. Well, they want last year to not be the high point. They want that to be the norm, the expectation. Handoff goes to Hickson. He's going to be close to a Liberty first down. See, Matt, I think this is exactly what Liberty needs to do. They got the ball on the outside, working on their horizontal game to DJ Stubbs. He breaks the tackle, picks up eight, come right back, run the ball up the middle with Frankie Hickson. You got to get some momentum with those types of plays. Hickson's helmet popped off, so he will check out. Peyton Pickett comes in now, as that was enough for a Flames first down. The officials getting together and having a conversation right now as they're holding up play. Please reset the game clock to 9.54. 9 minutes, 54 seconds. Listen, this is the first game. Signal. It's not just a little sloppy on the field. You got a little few clock issues, too. Yeah. We'll work it all out. It's early in the year. But yet at the same time, you, they're trying to play fast. You yeah. get a first down, you're trying to play fast. You shouldn't have to have to deal with clock issues. Three wide receiver set. Syracuse showing pressure off the edge. They give it to Pickett. Lunges, little second effort, gives him two. This is an important drive for Liberty. They don't have a goose egg on the board right now just to be able to figure out a way to get the ball down the field and even kick a field goal. Those first points are the most important points. Have to find a way to make something happen. Calvert in the shotgun. Brings Stubbs in motion behind him. Now they look to the sideline for the play. Plenty of time on the play clock. Calvert so far 7 of 13, 113 yards through the air. He does have the one interception. Buckshot stands in the pocket, now swings it out to pick it. He is quickly hit, wrapped up, and dropped. Good tackle in space made there by Antoine Cordy. Would have liked to see Buckshot just to hold that ball for a split more second. The Coleman had come open on a curl route, and he just missed it, gave it up a little bit too early. So we'll bring up third down now. It's going to be third and ten. Flames 0 of 3 on third down so far today. Here comes that pressure. Look out. Calvert gets away somehow. Now tucks it and just dives back towards the line of scrimmage. He'll end up losing a yard or two, and fortunately he didn't lose his head on that one as there were yeah. some guys getting free. Yeah, he talked about in the keys to the game being able to keep Buckshot clean. You'll see as the game wears on and, and, and tackles and offensive linemen start getting a little bit tired, and those defense, all American defense ends start cranking up their motors a little bit, a little bit higher and higher. It could get it could get ugly. Well, Dino Baber said a key for them is getting a lead and putting you in a position where you feel like you have to throw right, the ball. Right. Then those ends can just pin their ears back. Aiden Alvis to punt it away. Sean Riley back again. Good punt this time. Angles towards the sideline. And now we'll see where they spot it. Looks like it's going to be down around the 20 or so. And that's where Syracuse will take it. 
10-0 lead over Liberty. They'll look to build on that. We, we return. You're watching College Football on ESPN+. Plus. Nothing Syracuse on top of the Flames season opener for both these squads. And what a job Dino Babers has done with this Syracuse program. Joe, you and I have talked about it a lot. Back to back four win seasons his first two years, 10 wins last year. And you get the sense it's not like it, it's ending there. This is a well rounded program that is building towards becoming a contender of the ACC year in and year out. Yeah, no question. When you look at Dino Babers and the program that he's building, you can see how well he does in a mom and dad's living room. That his, this guy is, is, is building a program around young men that are going to compete, and he's going to be able to recruit really well. And off up the middle. Nice pickup on first down for Syracuse. As that was Abdul Adams. Nope, check that. That was Jarvion Howard on the carry. His first touch of the ball game. Don't be surprised right here, Matt. You get a heavy dose of run up the middle with Syracuse. They're starting to field a little bit. Well, this Liberty defense has been on the field a lot here lately. Another handoff. First down. They moved the chains. And that was Howard once again, the sophomore out of Mississippi. Last year at 315 yards on the ground. Used a lot as a short yardage back, so a powerful runner. And he remains in the ball game right now for the Orange. Quick pass towards the sideline. That one caught, quickly wrapped up and dropped. Tristan Jackson on the reception, and they have a nice pickup on first down. Jackson, a transfer from Michigan State. Get out of Michigan, you know, going to his dream school. Just didn't seem to work out there for him, but Syracuse really excited about the upside of this receiver. They're loaded up at the receiver position. Pitch out to Howard. Full head of steam, boy, that turned around in a hurry. Coming down to lay the wood to him there was Elijah Benton, the senior from LCA, the high school right next door here in Lynchburg. He delivered a big blow to keep him short of the first down. It'll be third and one. Really think Scott Simons needs to stop here, load up on defense, come after him, make a play, make something happen. You need something. Pull it out, throw it downfield, and it's knocked loose. Good coverage by the Flames, a big hit in coverage as Tristan Jackson tried to come down with it. Jimmy Fox was there on the coverage. You know what, Matt, what the best part of that play was, was on that slant route, it had targeting written all over it. However, Fox able to come right. down and get his shoulders down below, stay away from the head, and now you get a fourth down, you got to punt the ball away. 
Yeah, good job by the free safety, Javon Scruggs there as well, to kind of go low, like you said. Stay away from that head and neck area. So a punting situation now for Syracuse. Off Richter on to kick it away. DJ Stubbs deep to return, and we're going to get a whistle, I think, a delay of game. Delay of game. Offense. Five-yard penalty. Fourth down. The All-American punter just The team was lined up in a them. scrimmage kick formation, therefore the clock will start on the snap. A little more space. A little more space. Yes. 42.9 yards per punt a year ago. Senior Sterling Hoffrichter. I love that name, Hoffrichter. You got to throw a little. Yeah, right? I don't have that. I don't have that skill. <laughs> I mean, he's got that yeah. German Hoffrichter. Yeah. Hoffrichter and Schmidt. I'll leave that. That's Sound right. like two, you know, great soccer players. Yeah. Hoffrichter to Schmidt. Schmidt to Hoffrichter. Go! <laughs> Gets the punt away. Lambs trying to bring pressure. Stubbs will take it, drop it, kick it. It's rolling loose. Who comes up with it? If he got on that football and he did, that's amazing. That was amazing. He, he was surrounded that. by Syracuse players. I have no idea how he was able to stay on that ball. Just sheer fear of heading back to the sideline, having given this one back, <laughs> is the only reason he was able to get back on top of it. <laughs> he couldn't have said that any better, man. So the Flames fortunate to get the ball here after Stubbs boots it. And he, he's smiling now, but boy, he wasn't a couple of moments ago. Oh, goodness, a couple of adventures on, on each side, really, in the punt return game so far tonight. So the Flames have it, not great field position, starting inside their own 15. Haven't heard from Antonio Gandy-Golden in a bit. See if they can get him back involved. Hand off up the middle, not much doing on first down for Liberty. Frankie Hickson gets maybe two. You know, Liberty... Liberty's trying to show some patience right now, running the ball to the middle, but the bottom lines, there's a goose egg on the board right now, and you've got a senior quarterback and a senior star receiver that this is when they need to make the big plays for their team. Second and eight. Calvert pulls it out, looking downfield, climbs in the pocket, throwing down, looking for his receiver, and we're gonna get a flag. They're gonna get pass interference called. Looks like they're going to get Trill Williams as he was trying to cover Demario Douglas, the freshman wide receiver. Pass interference, number six, defense. 15-yard penalty and an automatic first down. So the Flames get bailed out there with the penalty. Do get bailed out with the penalty, but what I did like about that play is they gave Buckshot some time to be able to use his footwork and step up in the pocket and wait on a throw. That's, that's a good sign for Liberty's offensive line. Just had to be more consistent. They're a little bit inconsistent right now. So first down now at the 20, or excuse me, 31. Albert pulls it out, fires a slant. There's Gandy Gold ducking underneath the defender, and he has another Liberty first down. So the big fella, redshirt senior, getting involved once again. He now has five catches on the ball game, over 100 yards receiving. Albert under pressure, tried to drop it off to the running back. Hickson threw it at his feet, and that may have been the best result they could have hoped for on that play. Go back and look at that reception from Gandy Golden, 115 yards to number 11 thus far. You know, once again, Matt, you look at AGG. We thought he was strong last year. He even looks stronger yeah. this year. His ability to shed off tacklers and get rid of them, that's going to be give him the opportunity to make a big play downfield. He's had back-to-back 1,000-yard -back seasons, only the second Liberty receiver to ever do that. Off to a great start here tonight, but he needs a little help from the fellas around him. Second 10. Give up the middle. Hickson again goes into a pile and gets one, maybe two. Liberty hasn't been able to get anything going on the ground game. In fact, they're in negative yardage right now. Yeah, and, and not being able to get going, anything going on the ground game it has a lot to do with Syracuse's defense. You can see right there on that previous play, they're loading up and they're playing man-to-man. -man. And I say, if you're going to play AGG man-to-man, -man, I'm going to keep going at you until you can prove that you can stop him. By the way, Kenneth Ruff, who was injured earlier in the game, he's back in there at deep tackle. Third long, pressure comes, buckshot, hit, wrapped up, dropped. 
So the first wave didn't get to him, the second wave did. Calvert goes down another sack. That is the fifth of the night for the Orange. As Buckshot just did not have time to deliver the football. Yeah, you can see the pocket collapse right here. They're just big and strong and the way they move the pocket, collapse the pocket, and able to get around Buckshot. As you can see, they protect the edges. They protect the edges and make him collapse inside so then it all comes on top of you. Antoine Cordy credited with that sack. So the Flames are going to have to punt it away again and it's been a frustrating night offensively for Liberty. A low kick that's going to hit. Take the Liberty roll inside the 20. Now inside the 15 and it'll settle in at about the 14 yard line. So a nice job by Aiden Alvis pinning Syracuse inside their own 20. Well, there's another look at Hugh Freeze taking in this ball game from the booth down the hall from us. And you know, as an offensive guy, a guy that has dialed up high scoring offenses everywhere he's been, he's got to be frustrated with what he's seen so far tonight. Yeah, but at the same time, there's also been some really good plays that happen. Yeah. You move the ball, AGG makes a nice running catch. You move the ball down in the red zone, and then Syracuse strips the ball from behind, causes a fumble on the three yard line. If you find a way to get into the end zone on some of those red zone trips, this is a 10 7, right. you know, even ball game. So it's not that Liberty's not hanging with them, they're there. Well, this possession is big. Heading into the half, you're asking this Liberty defense that's been on the field a lot here lately to stand up again and see if at worst you go to the half trailing by 10. DeVito trying to set up a screen. Good patience finds Mo Neal. He's got a lot of room to run. Neal cutting it back, spun down now at the 45. So a big pickup on first down as they have had success in the screen game. No question. You start bringing that pressure up the middle. You want to blitz us? Okay, you can blitz us. We're just going to create a little bit of space, be patient, drop it off on the screen, run everybody off, and you have big gainers like that. 29-yard pickup. They tossed to Neal. The turf monster got him there as he tried to play in his foot and get upfield. No gain on first down. No gain on the Neal has been a weapon more so in the receiving game than anything. Two receptions, 43 yards for the senior running back. He remains in now, second and 10. Yeah, the screen they ran on third down, down in the red zone when they had yeah. pressure up the middle was a was a game-changing play for, for Syracuse. Flames show three down linemen. The rush three. You know, plenty of time thrown towards the sideline, and he and Tristan Jackson just not on the same page. Jackson broke it in. Devito expected him to take it out. No, you're starting. To, it's only in the it's only in the first half right now, Matt. And I was sitting here thinking to myself, you know, boy, this is the biggest third down of the game. You're it's right. Like, it's like early on. In some on, ways, though, it very well could be. In some ways, it is. Yeah, no question. For the Flames, you've got to stay within arm's reach of Syracuse here. They get another score before the half, and it's going to be tough sledding. Third and long. Here comes the pressure. They set up the screen once again, and once again, it works to perfection. Boy, they have seen something either on yes. film or, or what have you with the Scott yeah. Simon's defense, and they're taking advantage of it in the screen game. Yeah, the defense ends have to be able to read the screen game. The linebackers have to be able to read the screen game. When they start, when offensive linemen start letting you come through, something's up, something's going on. So you have to be able to read those screens. They're going to keep running it until you stop it. And success continues on third down for Syracuse. Vito under some pressure now. Rolls out, sends it downfield, just throws it away. Six of 12 in Syracuse on th converting third yeah. downs yeah. here tonight. And you think about how important those were on their touchdown drive, 14 play drive, converted a bunch of big third downs, and they're doing it here on this drive as well. Yeah, and it's not just the conversion of third downs, Matt. It's the conversion of a long yeah. third down. Yeah. They're converting third and tens. Hands off, Adams takes it. And he's going to pick up about nine. Dual Adams with the carry there. As we go under a minute and a half to go here in the first half of play. Timeout. Liberty. And Liberty's going to call a timeout. Just try to see if they can get this their defense. This will be a 30 second. A quick timeout. breather as they face yet another third down. This one much shorter than the last one. Yeah, that's a good timeout for Liberty to take.
So 10-0, Syracuse on top, minute and a half to go. Now keep in mind, you get down to this portion of the field, you got the best kicker in America in your back right. pocket as well. That's right. So that's certainly an option as Andre Schmidt can go out there and knock one through here headed to the break. But Liberty defense has been on the field a lot as we talked about. They've stood up maybe better than many expected here in the first half, but it's starting to get to that stage where you wonder, not a ton of depth on the defensive side yeah. of the ball, or is that going to yeah. start showing up? It has that feel to it a little bit, but you know, you go back in this game and Liberty had the, I believe it was a second and ten, and they got called for that intentional grounding penalty yeah. on the backwards pass, and then DJ Stubbs threw it downfield where there was clearly a receiver in the area, so that, that really hurt them on a, on a drive they were making. Third and two, the handoff up the middle, first down for Adams, he spins his way for a little extra. As he gets inside the Liberty 30, clock continues to run once they set the chains. Syracuse with all of their timeouts, plenty of time. Yeah, you, you, can, you can almost sense it, Matt. You can sense the, the tread on the tires is running a little bit thin right before halftime for Liberty defense. Vito hands it off. Adams wrapped up for a short pickup there. And I think we're going to see a Syracuse timeout here after that run. Yep, they're taking their first time out of the ball game. 57 seconds to go here in the first half. So you're kind of, to it as well, finding out how much confidence that Dino Babers has in his young quarterback in this situation. Yeah. Because is he going to let him loose and say, let's get, let's, let's just put the pedal down and try to put six on the board here? Right. Or is he going to say, you know what, let's play it conservative. We've got a great kicker. If we get three, I'm happy we go in 13 to nothing. We'll you know, see here on these next couple of play calls. Play calls. You, know, you know what I'd do on second down right now? Go play action? Throw a screen. <laughs> yeah, it's worked every other time. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I'm throwing a screen. I'm going to let him come out and yeah. throw another screen. So you can yeah. stop the screen and have what? They still have. O'Neal in the pass game. That's yeah, been the, the key that's to right. success tonight. Yeah, no I, agree, I agree with you, though, Matt. I think you're going to see them definitely. They're going for six points right here. They're going to try to find a way to take a shot uh, downfield make a play to, to get six points on the board before halftime. That's a, a, a touchdown right here and go up 17-0 before half is a, is a dagger to Liberty. Both running backs in right now, Neal and Adams, standing to either side of DeVito. Second seven from the Liberty 25. DeVito looking to pass, fires middle of the field, caught by Riley, and he falls down at the 14. Second catch of the ball game by Sean Riley. Syracuse, no rush. Walk up to the line, set and ready to go. Vito again going to throw it. Near side this time. Behind the receiver and nearly intercepted. See right Jimmy there. Jimmy Fox right there. And again, miscommunication with his receiver. I think that was Tristan Jackson again. They have not been on the same page so far here in the first half. But from Liberty defensively, that's a play, an interception, a game-changing play as they're in the red zone to be able to create a turnover. Have to find a way to catch that football. So Vito dodges a bullet. Second and 10 now. And passing it, pressure comes, able to avoid it. Chased down by Limonye, now rolling to the far sideline. Sideline, uh, oh, sidearm pass is picked off. Picked off in the end zone by Liberty. Bajor Wilson with the big play for this Flames defense. And you see a young guy there trying to do a little too much. That's exactly right. That was a situation where he had to scramble outside the pocket. That's a throw it over there to the Liberty cheerleaders. Let them make a catch and then play another play. But instead, Bajor Wilson steps in front of that, makes a great play. Did he get his feet down, Matt? Oh, it's right there. Here. It looked like it. Let's see if he got his feet down, if they're going to review this. Bajor undercutting the route. Yeah, he got, yeah he that's got good. It. That's good on Sundays. NFL. That's an NFL. Also, I think Vincent Elefante got a little piece of that ball, too. It looked like he may have deflected that throw, and it took kind of looked a little wobbly as it made its way to Bajor. So a big interception by one of the leaders of this defense, a senior, Bajor Wilson. And Liberty now with 27 seconds. You say, you know what, we'll take a knee, we'll go to the half, no and question. we'll see you here in a few minutes, we'll try again. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what the locker room will be like for Liberty. Like defensively, they say, hey, guys, we're holding up our end of the bargain. Yeah. Offensively, these guys not need to start putting some points on the board. We are going to talk to Hugh Freeze at the half, so we will have that interview for you, get his take on what he saw here in the first half of play 
as his Flames have been shut out but are still within shouting distance, trailing just 10 to nothing, thanks in large part to three Syracuse turnovers. This defense playing well for Liberty, and they need to see if the offense can get going in the second half. That was an exciting 10-0 half to tell you what. <laughs> that was, there was a lot of plays. A lot of a lot stuff of happened. A lot of miscues, but a lot of excitement, no doubt about it. 10 nothing Syracuse on top. Stick with us. A lot coming up in the half with Brett and the crew. You're watching college football on ESPN+. Plus. Welcome back to Lynchburg, Virginia. 10-0 in favor of the Syracuse Orange at this point. Just moments ago, our very own Melanie Newman had the chance to catch up with Flames offensive coordinator Maurice Harris. You knew that you would have to have a reversed role for this situation. Freeze is upstairs. You're usually there. You're having to be his eyes. You've got that eye contact with these players, which is what he wanted. How have you been adjusting to this change? I tell you what, it's been a smooth adjustment. We just have to take care of the football. We got two turnovers right now. That's really hurting us. We missed a scoring opportunity in the red zone. Those things are hurting us. If we take care of our, take care of our business, I feel really good about the second half. On the flip side of those turnovers, you've also forced three. So where do you start to gain that momentum and take advantage, like you said, not letting those slip away? Yeah, hopefully here in the second half. All right, Coach, best of luck. All right, thank you so much. Thank you. If you are uh, being a Flames fan, if you are one, the fact that it's only 10 nothing at this point, now, you know, this is a Syracuse offense that is quite dynamic. you got to be pretty happy with where you're at as it stands right now. My, thought, my first thought is yes, absolutely, yeah. but you're playing on the big stage, and we have now committed, hey, this is a team that right. wants to be big time. When you get the opportunity to score right. from the three-yard line, Gandy Golden makes it a beautiful 58-yard yeah. catch and run and dragging 17 yeah. people. 
you've got to punch it in. You have to score when you're on the three-yard line. Not a good look. Yeah, yeah if we kind of take a look here at the first half highlights uh, as things have gone on, it was pretty even to start things off with, and then it, it seemed like, you know, obviously – the defensive line for Syracuse started to get a little bit more of a push, which which stressed Buckshot a little bit more, and there were some turnovers, and that's really the story of the ball game right now. Yeah, it's the first game of the season for both teams. They're both playing okay football. It's not great football. Right. It's sloppy on both sides. Lots of turnovers. Three for Syracuse, two for Liberty. Uh, the play up front is 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 what is determining this. You know, there's not yeah. a lot of there's not a lot of give and take. You saw Syracuse adjust by the pressure of Liberty. They went to a screen game, uh, and Liberty is just having a hard time of finding an in when it comes to running, finding lanes. So not the prettiest of football. Both teams are playing as hard as they can right now. Not the prettiest. I'm sure both coaches are going to get them straightened in the locker room and come out in the second half and hopefully put it together and, and eliminate some of those mistakes. Yeah, defensive coordinator for the Flames, Simons. You know, you, obviously you're getting pressure to start things off with and you're feeling good about yourself, but then the screen game starts to happen and they're getting chunks of yardage each time they throw a screen pass. You know, what do the defensive ends, what do the middle linebacker, the linebackers have to do to, to kind of stop that? Well, you know, they're 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 – getting big eyes when they see that yeah. quarterback they're, they're finally getting some pressure yeah. on them. they think they're going to get to them then boom they just dump it off they have to just have some awareness now see those tackles once they start feeling them letting up there they have to realize all right something's happening they're trying to dupe me here and peel off and go make a play well make sure you stay with us lots more still to come we'll begin to break things down a little bit more in detail once again Syracuse on top 10 to nothing Hey, welcome back into the studio. Right now, Syracuse on top by a score of 10 to nothing. And guys, this game could have had an extremely different look. Liberty right there in the red zone on the 10-yard line, and then Josh Mack fumbles, and you could kind of feel the air just be like, Ugh. 
Boy, we were so close. How big of an impact is that one single play putting on this game right now? Well, the three of us were standing on the sideline when AGG caught the ball just before the right. fumble, and the environment was electric in this place. A touchdown, the top blows off the entire place. It really turned things around because the momentum completely shifted. You know, as a running back, down in that area, that's where you got to earn That's earn where you your make keep. your money, that's right, That's where Des? you make your money. you yeah. got to punch it in down there when you have that opportunity. So, you know, to give up a fumble right in, in, in a game like yeah. this where you have to protect the football – if you're going to even have a chance of winning, it's, it's, it was devastating for the Flames there. Let's go to the Syracuse offensive attack right now. And first quarter, Matt, things were kind of ugly. You know, it was, a, it was a rusty game, and all of a sudden, you could see them start to get in sync a little bit more. Well, again, like I mentioned before, it's, it's the first football game of the season for both teams. You've got to find a rhythm offensively. And Dino Babers has told many reporters and, and in the media, he goes, our offensive line has shifted around. We're only as good as our slowest offensive lineman. And he likes a tempo offense. Yeah. So a slow offensive lineman ruins that tempo. They also had to adjust to a lot of the pressure that they were getting off the edges from Jesse Lemonier. And uh, Ralph, Ralph Rusens is playing a great game as well. Um, so they, uh, they, they adjusted in playing a screen game, letting the guys come on a free rush, and then dipping Duncan to a screen for big yards. Right now, it seems like the entirety of the LU offense right now is the connection between Buckshot and AGG. And we were getting on AGG earlier, saying he has to show up in this game, and he has, but unfortunately, he's the only guy that's shown up. AGG needs some help from other players. I mean, we've got Hickson. There are playmakers that are on this offense, right. and he can't do everything by himself. And so far, he has, and we have no points to show for it at this point. Yeah, the LU running game right now stands at a negative 12 yards. You have to think that is priority number one when it comes to the offensive production for the Flames and what they want to get on track here in the second half. Yeah, you can guarantee in that locker room they're talking to those guys up front right. saying, you better open holes, you yeah. better get these guys some running lanes. They're going to make the cuts. I guarantee you Josh Mack won't fumble the rest of the game. He's going to protect the ball if he gets another touch. Frankie Hickson's looking for that spot. And you're right, Pat, you got to get – AGG has got to have some help. Uh, Buckshot cannot keep looking for him and only him. Peyton Pickett was the red zone guy last year. Honestly, I thought when they got into the red zone, it was going to be Pickett's ball. Yeah, I mean, they're in a competition right now, yeah. all of these guys. Interesting to see what they'll go with in the second half. Hey, we'll be back in just a sec once again. Syracuse on top of this one by a score of 10 to nothing. When we return, we'll take a look at some stats and the out-of-town scoreboard. and then things kind of slowed down. What adjustments do you need to see? Yeah, well, you know, we, we should have had 10 points and, and should be right in the football game. Our defense has played really, really well. Liberty Athletics would like to welcome to tonight's game, Gates, Flag, and Banner, the Hamilton Hawks, the Torres Group, the Oppenheimer Family, and Westover Baptist Church. Next time you're planning an event or birthday for your group, consider Liberty Athletics. Visit a gazebo on the concourse for more information.
Flames fans, our fall teams have started their 2019 seasons. Don't miss the Flames at their next home game. Women's soccer hosts Old Dominion tomorrow, Sunday, September 1st at 1 p.m. Your field hockey team opens their home season tomorrow, September 1st at 1 p.m. against JME. And then soccer concludes tomorrow's full day with a... Welcome back to Lynchburg, Virginia once again. Flames trailing by 10. Matt Warner had the chance to catch up with head coach Hugh Freeze just moments ago. All right. Well, coach, let's start with maybe the frustrating side of things. You had some good opportunities offensively early, couldn't put it in, and then things kind of slowed down. What adjustments do you need to see? Yeah, well, you know, we, we should have had 10 points and, and should be right in the football game. Our defense has played really, really well other than playing the screens. And so we got to get that cleaned up there, but they played, you know, to hold this team to 10 at half. Offensively, we got to give them a chance. And, uh, you know, they pretty much have solely sold out and said, we're going to play your man and pressure you and load the box. And so we've got to have some, we got to win on the outside some, and Buckshot's got to hang in there and make some throws. We had two guys wide open on some third down deals, and he's a little jittery. He's not hanging in the pocket, and we got to get that fixed and then get some more of our man beaters in. You holding up okay during this whole experience? Yeah, yeah. I'm not. Uh, I'm not. I don't feel it right now. I might. I might after we get through. But uh, you know, we can check it off the box. This is something I, I wish I was down there with them right now. But man, proud of our kids and the way they're fighting uh, against the top 20 team. We just, uh, you know, man, we we we've got to take care of the football and get those points when we have the chance to. And now we got to get some drives and convert some third downs. Appreciate the time, coach. Oh, thank you. Flames hanging in there and good to see Coach Freeze hanging in there as well. Time to take a look now at our stats for this game so far. And Pat, you kind of come up with one big thing right off the bat here when it comes to passing yards. Yeah, the thing is that Gandy Golden had a 55-yard catch that right. contributed to the 122 passing yards. So there's got to be more production than that one play. Uh, you know, for me, the run game has got to pick up here in the second half. We have negative 12 yards rushing here as a team, as you see there. You know, Liberty's got to do a better job of handling that that. Uh, front seven of Syracuse. We turn our attention now to the out-of-town scoreboard and some teams Liberty going up against here in the not-too-distant future on the board there. Obviously, BYU losing that. Yeah, BYU, that game, it's going to be an interesting game against uh, against them when Liberty goes out there. Looking forward to them when they go out to Provo and prove something against a, another good independent team. Well, we come back second half in just a sec.
about to start the second half here in Lynchburg, Virginia. Syracuse on top of Liberty, 10 to nothing. Flames will get the ball first here in the second half as they try to find their footing offensively. Tough sledding in the first half, just 110 total yards. Yeah, no question. Uh, Liberty's not down far enough where they give up on the running game. They got to establish some type of running game, but they need to find their first points in 2019. Yeah. to return the kick. We will catch up with Dino Babers here in just a moment. Syracuse head coach. Uh, first the orange to boot it away to start the second half of play. Shades roll Lewis underneath it. Back pedal a bit. He's going to bring it out. The freshman returns it, takes it up to the 15 or so where he's hit and dropped. And that's where the Flames will begin. A moment ago, our Melanie Newman caught up with Dino Babers. Coach, you said that this would kind of be a test for your guys, and the difference is you're the professor and you can give answers during the test on a team that you haven't gotten to see much coverage on. What were you seeing now that that first half is under your belt? What I'm seeing is they're doing some things that are a little bit different. We got to make some adjustments. We haven't seen that stuff, but we also got to settle down. We're making too many mistakes and we're killing ourselves. They're forcing turnovers for you guys right now, but haven't been able to capitalize on it. What does that speak to the strength of your defense? What we need to do is just be patient. We be patient. If we'll be patient, everything will be okay. Well, you got to be patient for two more quarters, Coach. Best of luck. Thank you, Melanie. Thank you, Melanie. Flames start this second half on the ground. Frankie Hickson with the short pickup. Hickson, his entire run game really struggling in the first half. You heard the fellas talk about it. Still negative yardage on the ground in this ball game. And uh, it's not necessarily breaking off big plays, but like you said, Joe, you just want to get something positive there. Make it a little bit easier on your quarterback. Here's some fun. Room to run. That's Caleb Coleman on the reception. He's across the 30. And a Flames first down. You know, Matt, you've got to really like Dino Babers in that interview. You know, he, he sums up his team. You like him in every interview. He's about as sharp a guy as you'll oh, see. He's so sharp, and he said, be patient. You know, he's just patient. That's a chart of how consistent and solid a football team they are. Flames move the chains. Hand off, Hickson. They move to run for the first time today. Stiff arm, drug down from behind, but picks up about six on first down. Biggest run of the ball game for him. Yeah, that's exactly what Liberty needs. Establish some type of running game in, in the second half and get on the board. Find a way to score a few points. So they gave him eight on the carry, second and two now. Albert pulls it out and goes to slant, and it's caught another first down. And once again, Caleb Coleman involved. Coleman, we remember, had a big yeah. game against Troy a season ago as a freshman. Kind of hit and miss in his young, you know, first year in, into the program last year. But they really like his talent on the outside. And as Hugh Free said, they need somebody else besides AGG to win on the outside. He's another big target for Liberty. He's yeah. a big target, and he can run. He got great experience last year as a freshman. Liberty expects big things from him. So another first down. Flames moving closer to Syracuse territory. Albert gives to Hickson. He's met in the hole and gets maybe a yard. Andrew Armstrong, linebacker, coming up making the tackle. You know, Matt, the other, the other side of this whole thing is if, if Syracuse so chooses to play man-to-man, -man, what, is it, what does that do for you defensively? It allows you to stop the run. So if they're going to play you man-to-man -man and they're going to load up to stop the run, then bottom line is you may not be able to run the football that yeah. effectively. However, you've got to take advantage of the opportunities they're going to give you downfield. It's a one-yard pickup on first down. Four wide receivers out there for Liberty. Calvert looking downfield. Here comes that pressure, trying to get away, and he won't hit and dropped. Again, the pressure gets to him. Josh Black gets him to the turf, and that is the sixth sack of the night for this Syracuse defense. Yeah, we talked about earlier, Keese again, keeping Buckshot clean. And haven't been able to do that, get him on the ground six times so far, and it's only early in the third quarter. Boy, they had, was it 43 sacks a season ago? You don't want to, obviously there's always that they're on pace for guy early in the year, you know, oh, they're on pace. Well, you don't want to start doing the math here if you're a Syracuse opponent. Calvert has time. Now kind of panicked a little bit, pulled it down, and maybe started to get outside of the pocket when he didn't need to. See, this is where Syracuse is good. So now we're talking about how they play them man-to-man. -man. 
the whole time. So now Liberty comes in. They say at halftime, all right, we've got to get our man-to-man -man beaters going. Now they mix it up, and they go into a zone. And you can almost look like Buckshot looked as if he was a little bit confused on that play because he had some time in the pocket. Yeah. He just didn't know where to go with it. So after a couple of first downs, the Flames will have to punt it away. Aiden Alva's back in. Sean Riley in there to return it. Alvis has been a bright spot for Liberty so far tonight. Low line drive kick. Riley will take it as a 20 spin. Now work his way upfield. He's got some room. Across the 30, across the 40, still on his feet. Hit and dropped as Alvis got in there to put a hit on him right around midfield. Yeah, we talked about it earlier in the game. A guy like Sean Riley had the fumble early, and then you knew, you just knew at some point he was going to break loose, and here's a perfect example of that. Line drive kick, not a ton of hang time. And yeah, he'll make you pay. One of the best returners, not just Ooh. in the ACC, but in the country. That guy's got more shift than Jimmy Johnson right there. Love our NASCAR fans tuning in tonight. <laughs> <laughs> he is the 48 car, I believe. Maybe wrong about that. He may be, I'm not sure. <laughs> so Syracuse gets it now just in the Flames territory. Liberty offense coming up empty once again. Handoff goes to Abdul Adams. He's got some room. Picks up about six. To, to give themselves a chance defensively, Liberty's played well. Not trying to knock them whatsoever. Liberty's played a great game defensively. But to give themselves a chance defensively in the second half, they have to win on first down. Get them behind in the chains. Second four. Another handoff. Jesse Limonier there for the tackle. Looks like it's going to be short of the first down. It'll bring up. Third, maybe a long one. I haven't talked too much about Jesse Lemonier so far this game, but I'll tell you what, he is a really, really good football player. I think personally the leader of that defense. You see how emotionally is out there jumping around, making calls. That's a fired up football player, and he uh, he's, he's due for a great season. Well, this crowd trying to lift their defense one more time here in early in the second half. Handoff up the middle, and he didn't get it. Flames brought pressure, met, and dropped. Jesse Lemonier getting back in there. Mari Jenkins as well. And it's going to bring up a fourth down. This is this is a fourth down go for it territory right here. I think Dino Babers going to leave his offense on the field. And they didn't pick up an inch on that last play, so it's fourth and two. They ran it on fourth and two last time. Flames walk a couple guys down into the box. They hand it off again. It's going to be close. Didn't get they it. They didn't get it. Didn't get it. They got one yard. They needed two. And you really can't ask much more than what you've gotten from this Liberty defense tonight. I and mean, that is a huge stop. And now we see Liberty. a flag in. So hold hold on now. Hold the phone. That's from the far guy. What's this? After the play was over, personal foul. Number 20, Liberty. The ball turned over on downs. Therefore, the 15-yard penalty will be enforced after Liberty takes possession of the ball. First down. Well, you get the ball back, but a penalty by Bajor Wilson. Didn't see what he did on the end of that play, but he'll give the Flames worse starting field position as they get the ball back, and he's having to explain himself. So the Flames defense gets a much-needed stop. They're still waiting to see if this offense can move the football. Liberty Trail Syracuse 10 0.
every offense. Elgin's 134 total yards so far in this game. And Syracuse D has been stingy tonight with more on that orange defense. We'll check in once again with Melanie. Well, it's not exactly up against Liberty that they compete against. Syracuse is number three in the nation when it comes to limiting teams on third down. In 2018, out of 143 third down attempts, only 42 were completed. That's under 30%. So for the Flames, they're going to have a tall task ahead of them to be able to convert that here. And it's going to be a big key if they can push any points on the board. Yeah, they had those opportunities early in this ball game. And you hate to keep harping on it, but you got to cash in on those. Now, if you're the Flames on the field, though, we can talk about it. You've got to find a way to put that in the rearview mirror and focus on what's in front of you. First down on their own 25. Buckshot Calvert has some time, slings it wide. The catch is made. That's Gandy Golden with the reception. And he gets about four on first down. Six receptions now, 119 yards for AGG. You think, Matt, you talk about getting stopped on third down all the time? And that equates to this. You need some explosive plays. You need right. plays downfield. Handoff going nowhere. Hit and dropped. Jonathan was there. Williams is there. The Flames still struggling to get much going in the run game. Now because now you put yourself in that situation where you're in the third and seven, third and eight right here, and the odds are really, Smelly just gave you the stat, the odds are yeah. really stacked against you. Flames 0 of 6 on third down today. This will be third and seven. Buckshot standing tall, fiery is picked off! Picked off by Syracuse! As Andre Sisko led the nation in picks a year ago, gets his first in 2019. Stepping in front of the intended receiver. And another turnover as this Syracuse defense just does it time after time after time. Cisco there, stepping in front of the intended receiver. Seven interceptions a year ago as a true freshman and All-American. First ever Syracuse true freshman to earn All-American honors. That's an All-American all football player right there. You can see how he's low, down to the ground, reading Buckshot's eyes, one step ahead, game of inches, and he makes a great play. Yeah, you freeze Buckshot having the conversation after that throw. And now here comes Mo Neal. Full head of steam down inside the Liberty 20. Feels like this game is at that tipping point, yeah. Joe. Yeah. But, but, Matt, yet at the same time, Liberty's defense has responded the whole game. You have to respond in the red zone. You still hold them to a field goal right here, and you got a chance to be within two scores. And off, going nowhere. And one on first down right there, which is a key. Defensive line has really done a nice job tonight. You saw Solomon Ajayi come down there from his linebacker position to make that tackle. You know, Matt, what we've seen Liberty's defense do today, which is impressive from a coaching standpoint, they're playing square. Swing it out, the catch made. That's Abdul Adams. He gets down inside the five and is dropped there. So you're seeing Syracuse, really, they haven't had much success at all throwing the receivers, but they have had a ton of their success with the running backs in the passing game. That's right. Dino Baber, as the offensive coordinator, has recognized that we're going to attack the linebackers in the passing game with our running backs. And Liberty's linebackers are getting sucked up in there, swing pass out on the, up to the wide side of the field, and, and it's a big game. Big Chris Elmore, they call him Rhino in there at fullback. They give him the ball. Rhino lowers the head, powers forward, and he's going to be short of the end zone. Chris Elmore, all six foot, 295 of a big boy. It's a big dude. Feet like a dancing bear. <laughs> that's going to get him that's down to the one yard of, line. That's just a lot of human mass in that pile right there. <laughs> that is loaded up with human mass. Second goal now from the one. Handoff, trying to bounce it outside. Did he get in? Yes. 
Jarvian Howard. Short yardage specialist a year ago. They bring him in with a yard to go, and he finds a way to stretch and find the end zone. Literally had him bottled up there, and then he was able to bounce outside, and I'd be interested to see if his knee was down before he crossed the goal line. We'll get a good look at it here. Elmore trying to seal the edge there. That's Struggs coming up to try to make the tackle. It does look like he was able to get that ball across the plane. They may take a look Ruling at it. Really on the previous play of a touchdown is under further review. So they want to be sure. Need a side angle shot of that. What are, you, what, are you, what, are you, what are you directing from the booth? Is that, what, <laughs> is that what's happening here? Yeah. They love it when you do that. Yeah, they do. They do. Jarvion Howard last year had seven touchdowns on just 68 carries. Looked like he just did get that one to cross the plane before a knee touchdown. So the officials trying to determine right now. And obviously a big call. Here's another look. I say he's in, Matt. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think I don't he think is. His knee ever touched. Struggs got there, yeah. just not able to drag the big 213-pound running back down. So it looks like he'll After get in. After further video review, the ruling on the field stands. There you go. Yep. So Sears will have a chance now to push into a 17-0 lead. They start looking at the way this game is heading. Syracuse, that offense, seems like it's been on the field a lot here lately. Liberty now in a situation where they've got to kind of speed things up and make some things happen throwing the football. Uh, Schmidt on for the extra point, up and good. And now, Syracuse and this defense has you right where they want you. They've got those. Quick rush ins. Woo. Get ready to see them come off the edge here as Liberty's about to get the football back, trailing by 17. as they say here in Lynchburg, Virginia. It's been beautiful for Syracuse so far. They lead at 17-0, taking advantage first of the Cisco interception as Buckshot Calvert tried to force one downfield, and then Jarvion Howard finished it off with the uh, stretch for the end zone. So it's kind of put up or shut up time now for this Liberty offense. You're at that point. Yeah. Already dug a deep enough hole. You gotta find a way to scratch and claw your way back into this ball game. If you got any tricks up your sleeve at this point, you better pull them all out. 
You know, the thing is, when you look at Liberty, they've actually been able to create some turnovers and get some stops on fourth, do those type of things, but there's nothing to show for. Points off turnovers, being able to score is what makes difference in, in, in the ball games. We always talk about turnovers, 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 but to score off those turnovers is what changes games. Liberty has not been able to do that, but yet at the same time, on the other side, Cisco makes a great interception. Off they go, touchdown Syracuse. Assistant coach Maurice Harris down there, basically the head coach on the field here tonight, rallying the troops. Luckshot Calvert's numbers, 144 yards. Keep in mind, 119 of those have gone to Antonio Gandy Golden. One knock on Buckshot in the past has been sometimes he locks in on AGG. I don't know if that's necessarily no. been the case tonight, but not a lot of other guys have been able to free yeah. themselves. Hey, playing that man coverage, and now you're going to start seeing him mixing it up in some zone coverage here. Aiden Pickett dropped in the backfield. Good play there as Mikel Jones, freshman linebacker, able to chase him down from the backside. Yeah, Matt, you said it right before break, is that now you give the opportunities for two All-American defensive ends to pin their ears back, put their hand in the ground, and get after the quarterback. That's when this thing can get a little bit scary. Second and 12. Three wide receivers out for the Flames. One shot, running out of time. Bang! Hit, dropped. Black there to put the finishing lick on him. And that is sack number seven now on the night for the Orange. Now, once again, man to man coverage across the board. Syracuse brings pressure. Buckshot can't see anybody that can get any type of separation. He's got nowhere to go with the ball. Like he can't blame him to. Receivers have to get some separation in order to give him some throws. It's hard to hold up in the pocket. Receivers aren't getting any separation. Brandon Berry also coming in there around Calvert's ankles there on that play. So third and 14 now. Now you're going to see Syracuse rush three, drop eight guys, play zone, and try to. Calvert going to keep it. That's Bounces off a be tackler. He's back some of the yardage they lost, but it'll bring up fourth and ten. Yeah, you, you lose on first down, you lose on second down, put yourself in third and forever, and you're in an impossible situation. You just got to punt the ball and hope to get a stop, quick stop on defense. Flames with 137 yards of total offense, negative seven rushing yards. Thanks mostly to all that yards he lost on the sacks. Yeah. And they have had a hard time moving the football tonight. Aiden Alves back in there. He's getting a workout. Line drive kick. Riley will take it. How dangerous he is. Watch Circles out. back. Trying to get outside. Racing to the near sideline. And finally bumped out of bounds. He went a long way to get about four yards. But you see why he is so fun to watch. One of the better return men in the country. Step aside, Syracuse in control here, 17 0.
Williams Stadium. Camels. Just desert, desert horses. horses. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he's got a point. That's a good point. Don't know. Point solid. Seems but, a little. But I'm not sure. Out of nowhere there. Yeah, but, but anyway, Tommy DeVito. How good has he been tonight? His first start. A little shaky, a little up and down. Joe, how would you grade his first collegiate start? Yeah, probably about what you expect it to be. I mean, he's 12 of 27, 150 yards. Uh, he's made some really. I, th I think he's showing great patience uh, as a quarterback. I saw, I think a couple times where he was able to get outside the pocket and run and not force the ball, but then at the same time, he has forced an interception late in the first half down in the red zone. So yeah, he's had some one. good, he's had some bad, but overall, I mean, he's definitely their future. No question about that. Yeah, had trouble getting on track with his receivers tonight. We've seen some miscommunication uh, at times between him and uh, Tristan Jackson and some of his other receivers. But but yet at the same time, the offensive coordinator has set them up very well because where they've exposed Liberty is in their linebackers and coverage on the running backs. And they've been able to get this on the swing passes and the wheel routes and whatnot, being able to get the ball out of the backfield to, to those running backs. And that's where a lot of the yards has come from. Jarvion Howard on the carry. Just like that, third down. Third and two. They swing it out. Catch is made by Riley. He has the first down and it's jumped out of bounds after a nice pickup. Riley maybe hasn't been quite as involved as we thought he might be. Just his third reception. He's got about, oh, 25 yards or so through the air. Yeah, they do have the – Liberty secondary, secondary-wise, they have done an outstanding job on some really good receivers. These are long. These are athletic. These are quick receivers. And secondary-wise, I think Liberty has played an outstanding football game against that – against those very good receivers. Well, they, they haven't made it, you know, let them get any easy or big plays down the field. They've made them earn everything they've gotten so far. Hand off, hit, dropped. Solomon Ajayi coming up and making the tackle. Younger brother of NFL running back Jay Ajayi, senior linebacker, tied for the team leading tackles a year ago. And had a pretty nice game here tonight. Don't, don't make any mistake, man. This Syracuse offense is a really good offense, and I am pleasantly surprised at how well the defense of Liberty has held up. They have made it tackled well and done a lot of good things. Just haven't done much offensively. You know, has some time, now swings it out. Catch is made, trying to get to the edge and drug down is Jarvion Howard. Nice play there by Ryan Davis to get him to the turf for a short pickup. See, that's a perfect example right there. Ryan Davis comes up. Gets him on the ground, gets him down, and only a three-yard gain instead of breaking a tackle and turning that into a 12 or 15-yard gain. That's just good fundamental football and good fundamental tackling. So you get another third down opportunity, third and seven. Vito feels some pressure, walking down the field, and he overshot his intended target. He was looking for Tristan Jackson. Those two have just not been able to get on the same page tonight, and it'll bring on the punting unit. Tristan Jackson had him beat by a step, and DeVito just let him out there a little bit too far, is able to step in the pocket. I think that's a throw that he wish he had back. So Sterling Hoffrichter. Comes on. DJ Stubb stands with his heels on his own 10 yard line. See if the Flames try to bring pressure here, try to see if they can make something happen on special teams. If they don't, drop it back. We'll be able to land and kick into the end zone. The Flames will bring it out to the 20. So once again, this defense, you, know, yep. you keep saying it, it feels yep. like, you know, a broken record. We keep saying the same thing again. But if you had seen this Liberty defense the last couple of years, you'd be just as stunned as we are no question. with the way that no they're question. playing tonight. And then on the other side, of the other side of the ball, Liberty last year, what, Matt, they averaged 34, 36 points a game? Yeah. Something like that. And we're still sitting here waiting on the first points in 2019. And it goes back to, I just take some shots downfield. You have AGG, a long, tall, strong receiver. Just throw the ball downfield. Let him go up and make a 50-50 play. They have some type of explosive play. Calvert get enough time in the pocket to let his receivers get downfield. Trying to connect there. That one a little bit off target as he was trying to hook up with the tight end, Johnny Huntley. Haven't heard his name called a lot. He's a guy they hope can be a weapon for them. Former four-star wide receiver. Started his career at Colorado. Transferred here to Liberty. Has now transitioned into the tight end role. And they really haven't been able to get him involved here so far tonight. 
Ballard pump fake, now swings it out wide. That catch is made by Stubbs. Picks up positive yardage, and it's going to bring up third, maybe two. That's another guy, DJ Stubbs, had a lot over 50 receptions last year. He's a, he's a fast motor, has good quick twitch muscles, and, and you find a way to do exactly this. Throw the ball horizontally to him, let him get it out in space, and pick up eight, nine yards on second down, put yourself into a third and short. Now, this is manageable. Yeah, third and two, they're calling it. Eight, pick it in the ball game. They're gonna give it to him, pick it his way, lowering his shoulder, he's got the first down. Take, take that back, that was Frankie Hicks in there with the patient run. So the Flames are able to move the chains as the clock ticks down towards one minute to go here in the third quarter. Flames have a good crowd on hand here tonight. It feels like they've just been waiting for yeah, something yeah. all night long. The defense has given them a few highlights, but boy, that's about all we've seen. The band's over there sitting on their trombones right now. They got have something to play. That one deflected as Buckshot was trying to hook up with Antonio Gandy Golden. That one tipped at the line and falls incomplete. Calvert just 13 of 23 on the night. Get another look at that one. A tip. That was the linebacker Andrew Armstrong. Got his hand on that. You know, you watch these inside linebackers play for Syracuse. They do a really good job, not only in the run. They are, they are pluggers. They will plug up the hole in the run game, but they also do a good job of dropping back into their zones, getting their hands on tip footballs like that. Roll buckshot out of the pocket, standing, throwing, and sails it into about the first row of the stands. Well, here's the thing, and you heard Hugh Freeze say it when we spoke with him in the half. He said he felt like... Calvert was getting a little jittery at times. Yeah. And when you've got pressure on you like that yeah. play after play, even those plays where the pressure isn't there, yeah. you still feel it. You There's feel like question. it should be, and it can make you rush things a bit. I mean, you come in at halftime, you get sacked, what was it, five, six times by half. That'll put a little bit of the jitters in you. Third and ten now. Calvert going to hold it, look downfield, pump fake, wrapped up, slumped down like a rag doll. Kendall Coleman got to him. Sack number eight for the Orange. Yeah, Buckshot had some time right there. He was trying to hit Coleman on the dig route, but then Kendall Coleman's able to collapse the pocket. And it's tough. It's tough. You're talking about two All-American defensive ends that, are, that have a 17-0 lead. That, that'll, that is what they are looking for. Eight sacks tonight here. Almost, they're closing in on a quarter of their sack total from all the last year. They are getting it done. One and a half sacks for Williams. A bunch of other guys have been in on it. That punt, fair catch called for and taken by Riley. But boy, there have been just a number of Syracuse defenders. Coleman with two, Black with two sacks. They have been all over the place and Flames offense can't get its footing. Syracuse leads at 17-0. Trying to finish off the Flames here as we head to the fourth.
Hey, we welcome you back to Lynchburg, Virginia. The Orangemen on top currently by a score of 17 to nothing. All right, let's go after Joe Yock here a little bit, guys, because you hear him there. <laughs> He's saying, hey, guys, this is what we need to do. We just need to get a 50-50 ball down to AGG and give him some time to get down there. Right now there's eight sacks, Joe. I don't know how on earth you expect this offensive line to hold up and, and give AGG enough time to get down there. You know, we were talking about it in the quarter before we came on. It's th Some of these sacks are on the offensive line. A lot of them recently, the last few, have been covered sacks. Right. These guys can't get open, and you know it looks like Buckshot is trying to hit AGG and only AGG. He needs to start spreading the love around. Credit to Frankie Hickson, though, doing everything he can when he's in there blocking, trying to pass block. Matt, I totally agree with you, but uh, as a former receiver, coming okay. to Joe Yock's defense here, give me the ball. What? Let me make a play. <laughs> I want the ball. Yeah. Just throw it up there. Uh, but you're exactly right. Coverage sacks are really hurting Liberty right now. Okay, so if you want to make a play, though, where are you, where are you going with this? Like, obviously, you're not going to just go the, you do a fade down the sideline. What do you want What do you want him to do, a slant route? What's going on? I, we give haven't me. tried a fade. Okay. <laughs> We're not even trying the fade ball right now. Get, try and get the ball in your best player's hands. All right, let's hear from Joe. Let's let him allow him to defend himself now. Obviously, we're kind of giving him the business here, but uh, he he wants to get the ball in AGG's hands. I don't know if it's going to happen. Joe, don't let him do that to you. Don't try. Don't let him do that to you. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something, Rat. Tell me something, Joe. <laughs> you have no idea what you're talking about. Okay, just take the ball, three-step drop, and yes, throw a fade down the sideline and throw AGG a 50-50 ball and let him say, I'm going to go up there and I'm going to snipe the ball in the air and preach I'm going to make a play preach for my judge. team. Keep going. Keep preaching. And then I'm going to grab my face and I'm going to throw his face to the ground and then I'm going to run for a touchdown. so high right now. Woo! Appreciate that, guys. Now I've got to deal with Joe all wound up for the last 14-35 of this ball game. Right now, it's Liberty defense on the field. As they have played well tonight, a good tackle there. Coming up, by Brandon Tillman, I think, that came up and made that tackle. It is. Haven't heard a lot from Tillman. He's been dinged up throughout a lot of camp and practice in the lead up to this opener. A good tackle there, as it'll bring up third and long for Syracuse. Well, the bottom line is first, you need to get the stop. Yep. And then we'll address some of your concerns and your, some of your plans on the offensive side of things as we get a whistle before the snap. And Liberty's going to take a timeout, their first Roger here of the snap. second half. Timeout. Liberty, their first of the so half. Third and ten, Flames want, maybe didn't like the look they saw or want to just chat it over here before this big third down play. And we're going to step aside as well. Joe's all ready to jump in. He has some sort of comment. You'll get your chance. You'll get your chance when we come back on ESPN+. Plus.
59 to go in the ball game. 17 nothing Syracuse. Liberty just announced 21,671 here to see this one, third most ever for a Liberty game. Let's take a look at this Liberty defense. Allowed over six yards of play last year so far tonight, just over four. So again, we've been telling you, this defense has been up to the task tonight. I think if you had told you Freeze before tonight, hey, they'll have 17 points in the fourth quarter, he'd have signed up for that every single time. Uh, speaking of Syracuse, and they have another opportunity here to get the ball back for their offense on third and long. Vito has a lot of room to run, slides down, he's gonna be short and a flag comes in, that's gonna be a personal foul as DeVito may be shaking up as well. Flames coming in, he gave himself up going into a slide. Seneca Espinoza delivered the hit and that's going to move the chains. After the play was over, personal foul, unnecessary roughness with targeting. Number six defense. The play is under further review. So they're going to take a look at the, it's not uh, targeting, I mean, he hit him with his, look like his backside. Yeah. So I don't think, I don't know that targeting will end up being the call, but he had gone into a slide and given himself up. And you just have to be a little bit more aware than that in that situation. He was going to be short of the first down as it was. Now what's the, what's the rule in college football, Matt, on the slide? Is, it, is he down where the slide starts or is he down where he's touched? I think he's hard. No, well, as soon as, as, soon as that knee touches, yeah, you know, wherever the ball touches, is. So, so yeah, he was going to be yeah, short. He was going to be definitely going to be short right there. Yeah, and that's a tough because you're in a third and ten. You're trying the quarterback scrambling to come make play. You, you, once you see him slide, you got to back off him. But I agree, there's no no intention of targeting right there. So Espinosa should be allowed to stay in the ball game. One more look. As he really oddly kind of led with his back there as he rolled into him. We'll see what the officials decide here in this situation. Dino Babers, if you're on his side, you can't be thrilled with what you've seen tonight. You're just wanting to grit your teeth, get through this one, exactly. pick up the W and exactly. move on and improve. That's the main thing. Yeah, it goes back After to... After further video review, there is no foul for targeting. Number six is not disqualified from the game. The unnecessary roughness will be enforced 15 yards and an automatic first down. So there you go. It hurts nonetheless, but Espinoza can stay in the ball game. So he had an opportunity on third down to get it back. Let's take a look at explanation of the, uh, the targeting rule there. There was no launching, it wasn't really a hit up around the head or neck area. So yeah, I think the right call certainly was made in that situation. But even so, Syracuse maintains possession and has the ball right at midfield. It's a third down conversion, a third and ten conversion for Syracuse. They're 50% on the night on third down. Handoff up the middle, going nowhere, hit, drop. Brandon Tillman, the first one to arrive on the scene. You know, Matt, there's two areas that we've, we've, we've consistently talked about how much Liberty looks improved on defense. And the two areas you're really seeing, what I've seen tonight is the multiple looks that they've given Syracuse, I think has given them problems. And then the second thing, so that's a schematic yeah. schematic part of the game. So they've given them multiple looks and that has given, given Syracuse some problems. And then the other thing that Liberty has done very well is they've tackled well. They've, they've, got, they've got players on the ground at the first contact. Vito with time to throw, sends that one high and wide of his target. And Tristan Jackson has to be saying, man, we went through all camp, all practice. What did I do to you? I mean, we've been on the same page all that time, and we cannot seem to connect here tonight. Yeah, they've been a little, a little bit out of sync, but that's what these uh, early games are for. And as the old saying in football is, that the football teams make their most improvement from the first game to the second game. That second game is, is usually played a lot cleaner. Jackson's been targeted seven times, and they've only completed one his way. So another third and long, third and ten. See what Liberty does here. And off up the middle, Bo Neal lowers the shoulder, and he's going to get about nine of the needed ten yards. So it gives them a good opportunity to go for it on fourth down, which it appears they will. You know, Mo Neal is, he's a square shoulder runner. He gets his shoulder square, gets north and south, pad levels down. Really good running back. Fourth down, Neal again, breaking free, he's going to go. Off to the races, touchdown Syracuse. 
41 yards to the house. He'd been plugging along, plugging yep, along. Yep, yep. And then broke through the line that time. Great blocking up front, and he's able to walk it in. You know, you look at Syracuse, and you look at Dino Babers, and you go back to what he said at halftime. He said, if we're going to be patient, if we're patient, good things will happen. And they've been patient, patient, patient. And then, bang, Dino breaks uh, breaks one down for a touchdown right there. And outstanding patience and, and great run. And that blocking up front, fantastic job by that offensive line. Extra point up and through. And Syracuse stretches their lead to 24. Mo Neal, great running back in his final year with Syracuse. Helps push his team towards the finish line. All orange at this point. Syracuse tonight, they lead it 24 to nothing, 12.35 to go in the ball game. And as you might expect, Spirit's a little low down there on that Liberty bench. We'll check in once again with Melanie Newman. Thanks. Well, guys, we've mentioned how high Hugh Freeze's spirits were earlier today. They could probably use that right about now. Every sack that has come, you just see a little more of the stress, the tension, and the upset emotions towards it. Hats being thrown on the ground, deep sighs. These guys need to find a way to control their emotions, band it together, not only find a middle road, but a little bit of a boost to get themselves into this contest. Well, I don't know about middle road, but they were playing Old Town Road here on oh, yeah. the stadium speakers a moment ago, so not sure if that'll help or not. My partner Joe is enjoying it, if nothing else. Grooving. That kick taken inside the five. Shadro Lewis on the return. Trying to bounce it near side. He is surrounded and drops it at about the 17. Did that ball come out? Syracuse is on it. No, the official there saying he was down. Lawrence trying to claim they had a turnover. Flames will get it with less than great field position. And yeah, nearly down. Yep. So right now, Joe, you're down 24 0. This game looking like probably out of reach here in your opener, but still time to find something positive moving right. forward. Is that kind of what you're looking for at this point? Something to feel good about here in the last 12 minutes of this ball. I want to see. I want to see this offensive line still compete, still trying to protect Buckshot. He has all these sacks on him right now. He's he's sitting back there probably a a little bit more nervous than a flea on dip day right now. And, and so right now we got to be able to see him. I don't him. know what that, what does that even mean? Well, if you're a flea and it's dip day. Okay. You're a the dog and you'd be a little bit nervous, I, wouldn't you, man? I, I, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I'd be a little bit nervous. But no, I definitely want to see him protect the quarterback. Upshot, there was an opportunity rolling out. He had DJ Stubbs open, overshot him. 
Haven't been many good looks down the field really at all today. You think even a big, some of the big plays, Gandy Golden, the 56-yarder, a lot of that was catch it 10 yards downfield and then sure. make everything happen with your legs after that, make a man miss, stiff arm a guy. There haven't been a lot of shots down the field. And as the fellas in the studio said, hasn't been a lot of time to let that develop either. These are the ones you need to convert right here. There you go. Albert hits his target. That's Stubbs there on the far sideline, fighting for every yard. Hit drops, but picks up a much needed first down. Love DJ Stubbs. That is a kid. He doesn't care what the score is. It doesn't matter to him. He wants a football, and he loves to compete. Love, saw that last year out of him. No matter what's going on, he loves to compete. Junior had 300 yard receiving games a year ago. Throwing it downfield, trying to connect with Gandy Golden. That one down around his knees with the pass from Calvert. And AGG couldn't flag it down. But we like those. That's what you like. You like to be able to get Buckshot back there. And that was a quick strike on a little, you know, six yard slant, a little quick slant to the post route. And you get the ball out of his hand quickly against that man to man coverage. I'm actually surprised they did it a little bit early on. Surprised they haven't tried that more with, with as much man to man as they've seen today. They're going to roll Buckshot out again, being pressure, and he's just going to throw it away. He was getting chased down there as trying to roll him out. You've seen that from time to time tonight. They've tried yeah. to get him out of the pocket, but really that hasn't done a whole lot to free him up from that pressure. Yeah, when you're being able to roll out of the pocket and, and do those things, I really prefer when you're seeing a lot of zone defenses, you get tight end crossers, slot crossers, and those guys are able to find the areas and find the holes that they can sit down to and get those throws. It's tougher against man to man. Third down, Albert on the move. Yeah. Just drops it off for about three yards there to Peyton Pickett. That'll bring up fourth down. He was a little nervous right there, just yeah. Yeah. He has been hounded all night long and you saw the pressure coming right there. Kingsley Jonathan bearing down on him and Buckshot just trying to get out of there. And I'd like to see him going for it. Fourth yeah, down. Going for it, fourth and seven. Yeah. Listen, you don't see it a lot, a lot of times on your own side of the field even right. in a game like this, but you say at this point, what do you have to lose? Okay, make a play. Something positive right here. Syracuse rushes just three. Calvert with time, has a man, uh, and boy. Adam. Adam. Gandy Gold, 6'4. He would have needed yep. to be about 12 4 on that play. As that one sailed up and over his head, looked like Buckshot had him open and just couldn't connect. So the Flames turned it over on down. First and 10. Yeah, you can see it's cover two right there. So the corner's trying to sink, but there is a sweet spot in between the safety and the corner. There's that, that we refer to, the coaches refer to as that's a honey hole right there in that little sweet spot. And, you know, and, and Buckshot just oh, Look at Dino. Couldn't, couldn't snag the football, went through his hand, so he drops and gives you the push ups. You see that? <laughs> that's beautiful. Yeah. Like, that guy's yeah. probably done a few push ups in his time. He looks like he, he can Dino's get out there still. and play a little bit, doesn't he? I'll tell you what, man. Dino looks like he would eat both of us as a Scooby snack. <laughs> so Syracuse trying to put the finishing touches on Salt in this one away. As the clock ticks down under 11 minutes to go. Abdul Adams with the carry. Adams now 14 carries, closing in on 50 yards on the ground. Matt, I've got a uh, I've got a trivia question for you coming up later when you're whenever you're ready with, for with it. When the mood strikes, when okay. the mood strikes I'll you, let you and know. you want to put your trivia cap on, you just let me know. Adam uh -oh. to the far side has the edge. Flag comes in. This one may be coming back as he gets knocked out of bounds on the far sideline. Flag came in as soon as he was turning the corner. I think you're going to get a hold here. Holding number 52, offense, 10 yard penalty. Second down. So they got the hold on Carlos Veterello, right tackle. And wipes off, wants out a big run there from uh, Dual Adams. All right, give me the trivia question. What do you got, Joe? You want it? Yeah, I want Let's no. go. Right, here goes. What very famous Syracuse football player played with me, Joe Yock, in the CFL with the Hamilton Tiger Cats? Wow, this is a really specific very question. Very famous, yeah. So a very famous, famous retired his jersey in 2013, I believe. Well, let me mull that one over for a little that bit. One over. Vito swings it out, catch made. Christian Jackson with the snag gets back some of the yardage they lost. It'll bring up third and long. 
Yeah, I can give you like a little. Yeah, 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 no, give me a little hint. Yeah, I'll take it. It's Jackson with the second reception. You don't know? You don't, no, I don't. I don't. No, no guesses yet. No, no guesses. All right, he was the winner of the Maxwell Award. You know what the Maxwell Award is? It's a, a lineman award. No, right? no, no, no. Outstanding quarterback. Oh, court, uh, most outstanding quarterback. Winner of the Maxwell. And and runner up for the Heisman Trophy out of Syracuse. Come on, Matt. Vito slings it out. The catch is made by Abdul Adams. Running game. Running backs being involved in the passing game. That continues. What year was this? Uh, we played together in Hamilton in 92-93 season. Mm -hmm. Quarterback. Oh, say, great huh? guy. Another holding great, call. Great Finally, guy. Third down. So that will, that will back them up. Again, a couple of penalties now. You say runner up for the Heisman? Oh, the Syracuse fans right now listening are going, come I know. on, they're, Matt. Ripped, they're shredding me. <laughs> I mean, he's, like, he's over there, he's, he's going, Alexa, who runner was runner up for the Heisman? Yeah, he's over there, Google well, search. Was probably all back before a I was Retired born. jersey. There's only a handful of retired jerseys. Oh, of course. Was it, was it Don McPherson? Don McPherson. Yeah, there yeah. you go. Donnie Mac. Yeah. Donnie Mac was. Should have known that. Johnny Mack was a great guy. I mean, I was two when that happened, <laughs> when he was a finalist for the Heisman. But, the you know, that's my yeah, bad. We didn't have cable at the time, yeah, so I didn't, you know, I didn't. Good one, good one, Yak. We'll take a time out. I got a good Donnie Mack, Mack story when you yeah, come okay, back. Oh, all right, Donnie I look Mack forward story. to that. Syracuse 24 zip. Four nothing Syracuse fireworks show here nearby in Lynchburg. Having a lot of fireworks for this Liberty offense, that's for sure. Syracuse though, a nice touchdown scamper from O'Neal here on their last scoring drive. They have it right now, third and 19 to go on the Liberty 49. Screen. <laughs> Why not? It's worked. Screen. Basically every time tonight. <laughs> I'm calling screen. For this Syracuse offense. See if they go back to the well one more time. I bet even Rhett McGibbon would call for a screen. Might be giving them too much credit. <laughs> Third and 19. Here we go. Those that have remained here at Williams Stadium. Will be. Trying to get their defense to get another stop. Syracuse 8 of 17 on third down tonight. They swing it out wide, caught by Jackson. He'll get a few yards, step out of bounds, and bring up fourth down. And they're going to bring on the punting unit. 
Okay, Matt, let me tell you my Donnie Mac, Do my it. Donnie McPherson yeah. story. Okay, so we're playing in Hamilton, and Donnie's our quarterback. Well, there's five of us that all roomed together. We had this great house it was right on the, in Ontario on the lake, and yeah. it was beautiful. And so all the roommates in practice, whenever somebody do something really good, they you know, make a good play, they'd say, I see you, roomie. Yeah. I see you, roomie. Right, well, Donnie McPherson, everybody's yelling this round price, and Donnie McPherson comes up to me one day, and he says, you know, I want to be a roomie. And I said, Donnie, but you're not a roomie. So he wasn't in the house. No, he didn't live in the okay. house. So Donnie wasn't part of it. He was. He was. He wasn't one of the roomies, right? So I said, Donnie, here's a deal. Here's what we'll do. Saturday after the game, okay, we're gonna have a little get together at our place, yeah. right? This little gathering at our place. And if you're willing to sleep on the couch, just one night. Just one night. If you're willing to sleep honorary on the couch, roommate. Right, honor, I'll make you an honorary roommate, right? And so yeah. Donnie McPherson came over, slept on the couch for one night. And then sure enough, the next practice comes and he drops back to pass and looks down. We had Earl Winfield, who was a Hall of Fame player for us, and Donnie just lays it out there and Earl catches it right and strides beautiful and, and all the roomies start yeah. going, I see you, Ruby! Yeah. I see you. And Donnie McPherson had that, he had that big grin. He had the biggest grin. It was all worth it to him. He'll say it's the greatest moment of his football I mean, I mean the Maxwell Award, yeah. no, the high yeah. run for the Heisman, no, retired jersey. Yeah. No, I see you, Rumi. Yeah, that's it. Right there at the top of the list. <laughs> Flames starting this drive on their own six. That's Troy Henderson in the backfield as Calvert slings it out. DJ Stubbs trying to get loose. He does. Why wow. he made something out of nothing there. And Always competing. Yeah, some effort there from number five. Stubbs, fourth reception of the night. He now goes over 40 yards receiving. Hand off. Middle, not a lot of running room. Uh, looks like the lap up for the first down is, once again, Troy Henderson, redshirt freshman, 5'10", 180. He's a little smaller, quicker back in there now for a look late in this ball game. We saw Josh Mack, remember, Saw him way back for two carries early in this game, one of which went for a fumble inside the five-yard line. I haven't seen him again. That pass intended for Damian King. I haven't called his name tonight. That one sailed a little bit behind him. Yeah, a little, a little bit surprised after Josh Mack. Joshua Mack had that fumble that we haven't seen him more. I mean, here's a guy that was a transfer uh, from, was it Maine? Maine, yeah. He transfer led the FCS in rush yards per exactly. game. Exactly. I mean, this is a workhorse type of, type of running back. And, yeah, it's the first game of the season. He had a bad play down in the red zone, but surprised that uh, they give him a little chance to get back out there and get a few more carries. I think he's a, he's a good-looking football player. Second long. Howard looks to throw, wow. sling it, has Damian King open. He makes the catch just shy of the 40. Flames moving the football a little bit here, and even with the score the way it is, once again, you're just wanting to build some a little positive. confidence. Yep. Some positives moving, moving forward. Flames hustle up to the line. Calvert going to throw it again. Looking to the sideline, the catch is yes. made. What good job there on the near sideline. Caleb Coleman able to get the feet down. Some of these young guys get some confidence right here. Like you said, just some positive happen. Get some potential points on the board. Guys like Caleb Coleman, make a, you, you go to bed at night. Remember, you made that catch right there, and that helps you for the next game, no question. It's a really nice catch. Three receptions for 25 yards tonight for Coleman. Calvert trying to hit the slant. That one deflected up into the air. The Flames fortunate it fell harmlessly to the turf. Calvert now 18 of 35 on the evening. So second, nope, make that third and three now for Liberty. As it has been Tough sled for the offense. They have now gone over 200 total yards. That run goes up the middle, not much there. Henderson trying to pick his way for the first down. It looks like he'll be a little bit shy. Gonna go for it again here on fourth down. Fourth and two for the Flames. A little movement, free play. Thrown out of bounds, he's in the receiver Coleman, but they'll pick up the necessary yardage on the penalty. Second time tonight, Syracuse has jumped on third down. 
Offside, defense, number 42. Five-yard penalty results in a first down. You know, Matt, one of the things that really we need to talk about is, is the effect that Hugh Freeze and the staff had had on recruiting here at, at, at Liberty. You look back and you, and you start seeing the, the, the type of players that they're able to recruit in now. Uh, they, I believe, recruited a total of, what was it, seven uh, three-star kids. Good catch once again. Stubbs coming to play here late in this one. Tough catch of draft. Nope, they wave it off. Say it wasn't able to corral it. Yeah, so you'll see Liberty as they've, you know, you look around this place and they've have their facilities, the new locker room that they just they just opened up, the indoor football facility, all that kind of stuff. It has really, really made a difference in the recruiting, and that's going to pay huge dividends down the road. There's a look at one of the new facilities, the locker room there on the ground floor of that building. It's basically all that's completed in that building right now is the Liberty locker room that they finally were able to use two days ago. Getting in there just right at the buzzer before their home open. Ruling on the previous play of an incomplete pass is under further review. So they're going to take a look. That one, Buckshot Calvert trying to fit it in there to DJ Stubbs. Ruled incomplete on the field. Let's see if we can get another look at it. Tell there. Right here should be the luck. I don't know. Let's Couldn't see. tell if that actually hit the turf. It obviously moved quite a bit. I think he caught that. I don't yeah, I don't think I saw it bounce off the turf. We'll see. See if they see something that gives them the feeling like they can overturn it. 24-0 Syracuse here late in this one as we're getting a little booth review. Yeah, that's a catch. I'm saying that's a catch. Cheer for you. Talk Fuck. about Liberty battling here late down. If you're Syracuse though, you're on the defensive side saying, listen man, we're 557 away from pitching a shutout in yeah. our opener. Yeah. There comes that pride on your side where yeah, yeah. the game may be out of reach, right. but we want more than just the W. Now we're looking, we're looking to kind of really put the salt in the wound. I think, I think Matt Warner just jumped in the Syracuse huddle over there. I mean, and you know, said, at this boys, point, I mean, he said, boys, let's let's go, let's finish this thing off. If you're a competitor, that's kind of what yeah. you're doing. And this was the play of the game, really. Liberty with the ball inside the five, they cough it up. Obviously, there have been a number of turnovers, three tonight for for the Flames, eight sacks. For Syracuse as well. Their defense has been fantastic. Right, we're about to get an uh, explanation here on, on the review. Nope. Said, so, you know what? We'll just we'll just go play on. Play on. Carry on, man. Carry on. Nothing to see here. <laughs> so it'll be second and ten. This Syracuse defense is legit. Like see him in person now and watch a little different even watch him on film. This this defense is well coached with really good football players. Troy Henderson gets a couple of yards. And it'll bring up third and eight. Yeah, you just see when we know we talked about going in the linebackers a little inexperienced, and that's something you where you hope they continue to get better, but the defensive line is just as good or better than we expected. That defensive you know, the, the safeties, the defensive backs, those guys have Solid. been incredible today. Calvert flushed in the pocket again on the run, looking downfield. Throws, has his man caught by Kevin Shaw, and he's knocked out of bounds after getting the first down. Love to see Buckshot making those plays, able to scramble out of trouble, break contain. Seaver works out, works down towards the sidelines. Buckshot delivers a strike on a third down conversion. That's, that's confidence building. Now inside that Syracuse 30. Yeah. Albert, a little hesitation. Now fired into double coverage, trying to fit it into Stubbs. 
Yeah, that's a miss. That's that's one that Coach Freeze will pull up on the film. An offense coordinator, Ken Austin, had the outside receiver. Not sure. I think it might have been Damian King down on a post route against cover zero where the safety comes down. And he's run that post. That should be an easy throw right over the top. And that was a, the best chance they had for a, for a quick strike touchdown right there. He just missed it. Went to the wrong receiver. Thirty-eight attempts tonight for Buckshot Calvert. There's thirty-nine. Swings it out to Stubbs. Not a whole lot of room to work with. Keeps those legs moving. He's able to pick up four or five there to bring up a manageable third down. Can't say enough about DJ Stubbs. He's an athletic competitor. It's a 50 plus catches last year. I think you're going to see as this new coach and staff gets to know DJ in game type situations how he rises to the cage and he'll become more and more involved each and every week. Tonight, five receptions. That's second most on the team. Ball loose on the ground, recovered by Syracuse. That defensive line making it happen again. That was 57, Kingsley Jonathan just swatted it out of Buckshot Calvert's hands and then fell on top of it. This D-line is just yeah. relentless. Yeah, they just, I was just say, they just keep coming at you, coming at you, coming at you. There is no, they're not looking at the scoreboard. They are playing until the final, well, that clock hits, hits triple zeros. They're playing this game all the way to the end. And that's how you, that's how you build a football program around an attitude that allows you to compete in a division like the Atlantic Division in the ACC. You're going up against some big dogs in that conference. Starting with the national champs. Well, Syracuse, I mean, you talk about what they have coming up. They start this season with two road games here and then at Maryland. Before the uh, the game everybody's waiting for, a game with Clemson at home on September 14th. We know what, what that matchup's been like the past couple of years. As we check in one more time with Melanie Newman, who wants to talk about the relationship between these head coaches. Well, I know that the scoreboard isn't exactly what Liberty fans want to see right now, but Hugh Freeze has mentioned time and time again how much he appreciates his relationship with Dino Babers. The two actually met in Pebble Beach in the offseason, so they got to know each other a little bit, and of course, they've studied each other's resumes. They know their background and what each of them is capable of. It goes back to that sideline demeanor for Syracuse, the fact that they've been quiet and subdued, controlled in their victories because they know that they still owe Freeze some respect here, and for Freeze, this is actually an okay situation. Situation. He said the biggest growth comes from when you're challenged and he knew they were going to be pushed today So if anything, this is going to be a tremendous momentum forward for them as they learn from the mistakes made today guys Yeah, they're gonna need to rebound and Liberty will head out on the road after this game As they travel on down to Louisiana next week Liberty with four of their first five games here at home So after that they return for three straight here at Williams Stadium so a chance here in the early portion of the schedule to make a little noise and get on track. But uh, this has not been the outcome they wanted. And I think for an offensive-minded coach like Hugh Freeze, probably a little more frustrating sure. than anything as well in the fact that that's your calling card. And it just hasn't been there tonight. Punt is away. It's going to take a big, high Syracuse hop. Flag comes in as well as that one rolls down towards the 10-yard line. You know, the question is, Matt, how do you, for Liberty coaching staff, how do you play this? Do you play the positives out of this game defensively, so many good things done, or do you go in there and just get up in their shorts and get on them and demand more and more from them? Which you know they're always going to demand more and more from them, but I really believe that there is a lot of positives for Liberty to take away from this game, especially defensively. Well, yeah, it doesn't have to be all or, all or nothing there in that no scenario. Question. I mean, your, your defense can feel pretty good about the fight and, and the, the way down, they played tonight. Number 16 of the kicking team went out of bounds on his own and came back in bounds. That five-yard penalty will be added on to the end of the kick. First down. But yeah, certainly I think this offense is going to be challenged here this next week to be better than they were. You're looking ahead. Liberty, as we mentioned, goes to Louisiana next week. They lost to Mississippi State 38-28 today, so they put up a pretty good fight there 
for Syracuse going traveling to Maryland. Maryland played Howard today, and they were not very uh, hospitable hosts. They, they won that one 79 to nothing. Oh. So, see, I, you know, yeah, you kind of always wonder how they're going to react after that. Jonathan Bennett in there now, quarterback, as the freshman getting a look here late in this one. The freshman out of Somerville, South Carolina, dual threat guy that a lot of folks are excited about. Jonathan Bennett is a true freshman, correct? That's right. Yeah, he's not a redshirt freshman. He did come uh, enroll early, so he was here yeah. for the spring season, which helps quite a bit. Physically, he's a, watch him at practice, he is a really good looking kid. Swing it out near side, catch made. Short pickup there to Demario Douglas. Yeah, Bennett, a guy, good football IQ. A kid that, you know, you just talk to him and you think, boy, uh, this kid, whatever you do in life, even beyond football, this kid's going to be a good one. He's a smart kid, especially for his age. As he stands in the pocket, fires. That one off the hands of Kevin Shaw, but a flag comes in. And the Flames are going to pick up the first down on a pass interference call. Remember, Liberty was wondering until earlier this week whether they were going to have pass quarterback Malik Willis. Number three, defense, automatic. Transfer from Auburn yeah. at the quarterback position. He had put in for a waiver to play right away. Flames you know, go through all of camp, practice waiting to find out. And uh, they found out on Wednesday that he was not granted that waiver. So he has to sit out this year. We'll then have two years of eligibility remaining. And that's a shame. We'll have to have you know, these NCAA waiver things. You never know how those things are going to go. Run there, pick it. Not much doing. As they'll bring up second down. Yeah, it was worth the shot, certainly, for sure. Willis. And they definitely have given Hugh Freeze another toy in this offense. But as it is, they'll have to wait and have him for a couple of years. And then, who knows, maybe he and Jonathan Bennett will be battling for that yeah. starting spot. Jonathan Bennett can spin it. I mean, he's had a couple of throws. You watch it come out of his hand. It, it's a quick release, and he's got some arm strength. Watch this throw right here. Back. Slaying it downfield. Good coverage. And overshot. Shadro Lewis is intended receiver. Couldn't quite get on the same page there. It was good coverage, as you said, down the field. Stritzinger there in coverage. Junior out of Detroit. So a minute 37 to go in this ball game. Syracuse, far from what they would call a perfect performance, all told. But defensively, boy, so much to like. And it's slinging it down the middle of the field. Couldn't connect with Douglas. And yeah, you look at this Syracuse defense. You know, you know, Matt, when they're talking about, uh, they're talking about players, right? There's players, and in the coaching world, they call them guys. And you hear all these, these this guy yeah. and that guy. But but you know what the compliment is when you're when you know that you're just no longer a guy. It's that. It's when they start calling you dudes. Oh yeah. Like, they got. Some <laughs> dudes, this guy's then. a dude. Yeah, they've got, they got some a dudes. few dudes. Like in Syracuse, right? They came in early on. Dino's taking over the program. They had a bunch of guys. Now you're looking at that defense, and you're like, they're loaded with dudes. Two defense ends at safety. It's going to be fun seeing what this team's able to do the rest of the season. And a lot of it will probably hinge on as Riley takes the fair catch. Will hinge on the de development of their young quarterback. Because we see the defense tonight. We see yeah. what's in place there. The question now, and I, and I think, too, we all know Dino Babers, the offensive mind that he is. He's going to get these guys to improve. Yeah. But that's an area where you look at it and say, okay, there's some room for growth no there question. compared, you know, just based off of what we saw here tonight. But DeVito's a good quarterback, and this is, you know, this is a confidence. He's come come to, 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 a, to on a road game and to be able to not necessarily, you know, play great and, and put up great stats or anything like that, but to get a 24-0 victory on the road is a good confidence builder for him, and you'll see drastic improvement, I think, because I think he can play. You'll see drastic improvement out of this game for the rest of the season. Well, his night is done. Clayton Welch in there now to help salt this one away. Give up the middle, clock running. And Jarvion Howard takes the handoff. Clock ticks down towards a minute to go. Well, you never know what to expect week one. 
As you say, Joe, biggest improvement usually comes between week one and two, so we'll keep an eye on both of these squads next week and see how they're able to uh, improve on what we saw here tonight. I think both head coaches know we got to get better offensively. <laughs> yeah, we didn't get to see the first points of the season for, for Liberty University. We'll have to hold on to the next home game. They'll have to head on down, see if they can get them against the Raging Cajuns. It's a great name. That is a good name. So they'll hit the road and see how they fare there. I don't want to fight a Raging Cajun. No way. <laughs> you say, who do you want to fight? Well, okay, I'll fight the, the Tigers or the Bears. You, know, you really don't want to fight them either. But I don't fight anybody that's uh, Raging. But not a Raging no. Cajun. As coaches begin to walk out towards midfield, you see, look at that. Classy move, Dino. Motioning up to Hugh Freeze, the thumbs up back to him. A lot of respect between those two guys. And you know Dino, classy guy that he is. Nobody feels worse about yeah. Hugh Freeze's situation than, than Dino Babers. These, yeah, guys, no question. these Just, guys have both worked a long time in this business. And you know, Joe, a lot of respect between head coaches. Coaching fraternity is a tight fraternity. And Dino Babers is a classy man, and he runs a, he runs a classy program. He certainly does, and it's a program that continues to uh, have an upward trajectory as they pick up their first win of the season here tonight in shutout fashion. 24 to nothing. They shut out the Flames here in Lynchburg. So you come on the road, hostile environment, home opener for Liberty. Bottom line, Syracuse has to be thrilled. They're just getting out of here with the W. Business trip. It's a business trip. You just look at the personality of their team and how they act and how their head coach acts. And it's a business trip. And they came in here, they got the job done. Now they move on into, like you said, a tough Atlantic ACC division. And uh, be exciting for them the rest of the season. So Syracuse takes it 24 0 the final. For Joe Yaki, Melanie Newman, I'm Matt Warner. Remember, you can watch all ESPN broadcasts archived on the Watch ESPN app. Thank you so much for tuning in tonight from Lynchburg, Virginia. One last time, Syracuse wins it by the final of 24 to nothing.